evening. The City of Boston Zoning Board of Appeal hearing for um, April 26th is now in session. This hearing is being conducted in accordance with the applicable provisions of the, of the open meeting law, including the updated provisions enacted by the legislature last year. The new law allows the board to continue its practice of holding virtual hearings until July 15, 2022. This hearing of the board is being held remotely via the Zoom webinar event platform. This hearing is also being live streamed. In order to ensure this hearing of the board is open to the public, Members of the public may access this hearing through telephone and video conferencing. The information for connecting to this hearing is listed on today's hearing agenda, which is posted on the public notices page of the city's website, boston.gov. Members of the public will enter the virtual hearing as attendees which means you will not see yourself on the screen and you will be muted throughout unless administratively unmuted when asked to comment. Board members, applicants and their attorneys or representatives will participate in the hearing as panelists and they will um, appear alongside the presentation materials when speaking. Panelists are strongly encouraged to keep your video on while presenting to the board. As with our in-person meetings, comments and support will be followed by comments in opposition. The order of comments is as follows, elected officials, representatives of elected officials, and members of the public. The chair may limit the number of people called upon to offer comment and the time for commenting as time constraints require. For that reason, the board prefers to hear from members of the public who are most impacted by a project. That is those individuals who live closest to the project. If you wish to comment on an appeal, please click the raise hand button along the bottom of your screen in the Zoom webinar platform. Click it again and your hand should go down. When the ambassador sees your hand, you will re receive a request to unmute yourself. Select yes and you should be able to talk. If you are connected to the hearing by telephone, please press star nine to raise and lower your hand. You must press star six to unmute yourself after you receive the request from the ambassador. Again, if you are connected to the hearing by telephone, please press star nine to raise and lower your hand and press star six to unmute yourself after you re receive the request from the ambassador. Those called upon to comment will be asked state their name and address first, and then can provide their comment. In the interest of time, and to ensure that you have enough time to do so, please raise your hand as soon as Mr. Fortune reads the address into the record. Do not raise your hand before the relevant address is called, or the ambassador will not know to call on you at the appropriate time. Please lower your hand once you've already made your comments so that we know who is still out there who wants to have their um, information on the record. Also, just a reminder that if you are sending anything through chat, it's not put into the official record. So if there is anything that you need in the official record, please put your name and address on the record or send an email so that we have everything documented. So um, these, these instructions will be repeated throughout the hearing. Let me just see who's here. Uh, Mr. Fortune, I see you there. Good morning. Good morning, Chair. Uh, Mr. Ruggiero, are you on? Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. Mr. Ehrlich? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Robinson? 
Good morning. Good morning, um, Ms. Panado. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. Um, Ms. Dong, are you here yet? He doesn't appear to be, Madam Chair. We're, we're reaching yes. out to her to see if she has any technical help. Yes, she's, um, no, no, she's just um, at another meeting and um, it's just double booked. So she will be on as soon as she can, but do let me know when she's on. So this is a reminder that as of now, this is a six member board. Um, we will proceed, but once we get to the cases, should Ms. Dong not be able to join us at that time, I will have to advise everybody that they can, they need five members in support of their proposal um, for it to carry. But in the meantime, we are working on under the best case scenario that she will be joining us when we get to the full cases. Um, go ahead, Mr. Fortune. Thank you, Madam Chair. The first order of business is the approval of the hearing minutes of March 17th of 2022 and March 22nd of 2022. I need a motion. To make a motion to approve. Is there a second. second? All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Any opposed? Motion carries. Calling the first extension, calling BOA 803 394 246 to 248 Dorchester Ave. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, good morning, Mr. Secretary, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Joe Hanley, McDermott, Colton Miller, 28th State Street in Boston. Thank you, Mr. Hanley. Thank you, Mr. Hanley. The board originally granted this relief on May 11th, and it granted its first extension of relief until May 11th of 2021. However, that extension was unnecessary. With tolling, the original grant of relief remained valid until August 16th of 2021. However, the board granted an extension on relief of May 11th 2021 until May 11th of 2022. This extended the expiration of relief past the toll expiration date. I recommend that the board confirm for the record that this extension encompassed all applicable tolling. The applicant now also requests an additional extension until May 11th of 2023. I recommend that the board grant the additional extension if it determines that it is appropriate under the circumstances, taking into account that this would only be the applicant's second necessary extension. <clears throat> May I have a motion, please? Motion to, to support the recommendation. There are a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So, Madam Chair, just for the record, so that would be May 11th of 2023. Exactly. If you could put that into the you, motion, Secretary. Material, that would be great. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Colin, calling the next extension, calling BOA 822 528 71 Mozart Street. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, Jason Hutchinson, 71 Mozart Street. I live in Newton, 565 Boylston Street. Thank you, Mr. Hutchinson. Regarding 71 Mozart Street, the board originally granted this relief on March 1st of 2019, and it granted the first extension of relief until March 1st of 2022. However, that extension was unnecessary. With tolling, the original grant of relief remained valid until June 6th of 2022. I recommend that the board confirm for the record that the relief remains valid until that date. The applicant now also requests an additional extension until March 1st, 2023. I recommend that the board grant that additional extension if it determines that it is appropriate under the circumstances, taking into account that this would only be the applicant's first necessary extension. Mo motion to extend until March 1st, 2023, and that includes all applicable tolling. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Motion carries. Thank you. Calling the next case, calling BOA 932-844-192 Gladstone Street. Name and address for the record, please. Mr. Bob Ron. Yep. Yes. Name and address uh, for the record, please. Yes, 192 Gladstone Street. This is Michael Barber, one of the owners. Thank you. Street. Regarding 192 Gladstone Street, the board originally granted this relief on April 30th of 2020, and the applicant first request for an extension. Tolling does not apply to this relief because it was granted after the declaration of COVID-19 state of emergency. This relief expires on April 30th, 2022. I recommend that the board grant the extension if it determines it is appropriate under the circumstances. I'll make a motion for a one-year extension to April 30th, 2023. 
I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Calling the next two cases for extension, calling Aye. DOA 805-934, Three Snelling Place. There's a companion case, VOA 805-933, Three Snelling Place. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, good morning, Attorney William Ferrolo, McDermott Quilty and Miller, 28 State Street, uh, on behalf of the applicant. Thank you, Mr. Perillo. Regarding Three Snelling Place, the board originally granted this relief on April 27th of 2018. And it had granted the first extension of relief until April 27th of 2020. Mr. Barber, can you please mute yourself? Thank you. Uh, sorry, um, Mr. Fortune. All right. The extension was unnecessary. Withholding the original granted relief remained valid until August 2nd of 2021. However, the board granted the extension of relief on April 27th of 2021 until April 27th of 2022. I recommend that the board confirm for the record that this extension encompassed all applicable tolling. The, the applicant now also requests an additional extension until April 27th of 2022, 23. I recommend that the board grant that additional extension if it determines it is appropriate under the circumstances taken into the account, there would only be the applicant's second necessary extension. Uh, I missed a date. Can you say the date again? Sure, Mr. Rosario. The applicant also requests an additional extension until April 27th of 2023. I'll make a motion to extend to relief until April 27th, 2023. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. On the next case, calling DOA 865 262 72 Dresser Street. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Matt Echo with Drago and Toscano with business address of 11 Beacon Street. Thank you, Mr. Echo. Regarding 72 Dresser Street, the board originally granted this relief on June 14th of 2019 and it granted its first extension of relief until June 14th of 2022. However, that extension was unnecessary. With tolling, the original grant remains valid until September 19th, 2022. I recommend that the board confirm for the record that the relief remains valid until that date. The applicant now also requests an additional extension until September 19th, of 2023. I recommend that the board grant that additional extension if it determines it is appropriate under the circumstances taking into account that this would only be the applicant's first necessary extension. No. Motion to extend relief through September 19th, 2023, and that includes all applicable tolling. Well, I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Calling the last case for extension, calling DOA 768-729-79 to 89 West Broadway. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Mark Lacasse, Lacasse Law, 75 Arlington Street in Boston, attorney for the applicant. Thank you, Mr. Lacasse. Regarding 7989 West Broadway, the board originally granted this relief on May 11th of 2018 and granted the first extension of relief until May 11th of 2021. However, that extension was unnecessary. With tolling, the original grant of relief remained valid until August 16th of 2021. However, the board granted an extension of relief on May 11th of 2021 until May 11th of 2022. This extended the expiration of relief past the told expiration date. I recommend that the board confirm for the record that this extension encompassed all applicable tolling. The applicant now also requests an additional extension until May 11th of 2023. I recommend that the board grant that additional extension if it determines it's appropriate under the circumstances taking into the account that this would only be the applicant's second necessary extension. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to extend until May 11th, 2023, and that includes all applicable to I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Calling the first case of board final auditor, calling DOA 113 133 Boardman Street. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Derek Small, my business address of 51 Dobson Road. Madam Chair, we're here today. Um, the board granted relief for this project um, to erect 
seven unit building with seven parking spaces. Um, and in a BPDA design review, the number of parking spaces was re reduced from seven spaces to six spaces. Um, the, we checked in with the Boston Transportation Department and they also agreed that six spaces was suitable. Um, in applying for the permit, the plans examiner at Inspection of Services Department wanted us to come back to the board just to confirm with the board that the reduction in spaces was, was sufficient. So that's why we're here today. And um, um, Councillor, did we did the board uh, request this review by um, BTD and um, BPDA? Yes, that was a proviso on on the relief grant. It was BPDA design review. Okay, may I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. On the next case for board final arbiter, calling DOA 937 968 1112 to 1116 Boylston Street. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Josh Zakem, 10 Tremont Street, Boston, uh, for the proponent. So we are here before you today. This is a recreational uh, cannabis dispensary located at Boylston Street and Mass Ave. Uh, the board uh, gave approval for this uh, over uh, just about a year ago with a one-year sunset proviso. Um, we have been going through significant uh, delays related to COVID as well as the State Cannabis uh, Control Commission architectural review uh, and approval of the plans and are here asking for uh, an extension or alternatively removal uh, of the proviso. Um, I know when the board uh, added this uh, to the relief, it was based on seeing how operationally uh, this facility would structure, would, uh, would interact, I guess, uh, with the surrounding area and the buildings and obviously given these delays, um, we're here asking for, for that extension. May I have a motion, please? I'd like, a, I'd like to make a motion to modify the proviso to specify that it's a one, one year sunset on from the date of the certificate of occupancy. I'll second that. Um, and um, we continue with the proviso that it's to this applicant only. Y yep, yep. The only modification is just okay. one year. Is there, and there's a second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. The next case is in regards to the Greenbelt Protection Overlay District, case BOA 128 160 William T. Morrissey Boulevard. This is an exterior fence construction along Morrissey Boulevard, the grandstand reconstruction of an existing location, and an addition of the maintenance building between the Carter Stadium and Monin Park. The violations Article 29. In the green article, article 29, section 4, the Green Belt Protection Overlay District applicability. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, my name is Paula Devereaux. I'm an attorney at Pierce Outwood at 100 Summer Street in Boston, and I'm here on behalf of Boston College High School, BC High, for approval within the Green Belt Protection Overlay District. This is within the community facilities um, subdistrict, and this use is allowed in this area, and there are no dimensional violations. Um, that have been noted by ISD on the turndown letter. So we are requesting um, approval for this. We have met with the Boston Conservation Commission. And received yeah, just hold on for a minute, please. Okay. Um, so um, we don't see Greenbelt Protection Overlay Districts very much. Um, and basically this is, um, the, if the uses are allowed, there are no dimensional requirements just like the 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 c pod we are um, an administrative body and and just just uh, basically look at it um there are other checks and balances in place for example on this one it needs to go to the parks department and i noticed that the bpda also has a recommendation so may i have a motion please motion to approve um, i'll second eric uh, can we have it with the provisos that the BPDA has recommended? With a motion to approve with BPDA design approval um, and attention to materials, did it differentiate the entrance drives and create a hierarchy? And there's I'll second that. All those in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm going to call the 930 hearings. This is for the, the either withdrawals or deferrals at 930 only. If you could give me the address first, please. Yes, Mr. Fortune, uh, 69 Saratoga Street. Thank you. For the, for the record, calling DOA 116 Saratoga Street. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Derek Small. I'm a business address of 51 Dobson Road. Madam Chair, we're here seeking a deferral uh, because we were informed by the Zoning Board of Appeals Office that uh, this project has to be re-advertised. May I have a motion, please? Motion to defer. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The date, please. Uh, Mr. I'm going to, I'm sorry, Derek, Mr. Small. Hey. We're going to defer till June 7th. At 1130? At 1130, Madam Chair. All right, thank you very much. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals for 930 only? Uh, yes, good morning. I have a request for a deferral for 70 yes. Von Hillern Street. This is Attorney Jennifer Thank you. Cole. Hold on two seconds, ma'am. Thank you. For the record, calling DOA 1152039, 70 Von Hillern Street. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, Jennifer Schultz for Sullivan and Worcester at 1 Post Office Square in Boston. And tell, uh, us, the, why, tell us why you're requesting the deferral. Uh, Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the request for the deferral uh, is I was just brought on to represent the owner of the property and we just need uh, a handful of weeks to um, figure out some differences between plans between the owner of the property and the tenant uh, applying for the cannabis establishment use. Um, and that's okay. the reason. Thank you. Thank you. Um, may I have a motion? Motion to defer. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. The date, please. Council, would a date of uh, July be better than a date in, Ju in June? Uh, I, I, June would be fine. We can make that work. All right. Well, June 21st at 11.30. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. I'm sorry. June 7th. My apologies. <laughs> June 7th. That, that works, too. Thank June you. 7th. Okay. Thank you. Uh, are there any other deferrals or withdrawals for 9.30 only? Hearing none, Madam Chair, I'm going to call the first case. Calling DOA 128 2958 228 Hobbs Street. This is completely replace the roof and construct a new roof deck. The violation is Article 27G. This is in the East Boston iPod. And Article 53, Section 52, Roof Structure Restriction. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, Mike Smith, 228 Hobbs Street, the owner of the property and uh, resident at 228 Hobbs Street. So tell us what's being proposed. Okay, so this is you you controlling the screen, Madam Chair. All right, perfect. Um, so what we're trying to do is erect a, a, a roof deck on my property at 228 Havre Street. Um, I have a contract on the line, Matt Palmer from MMC Construction, as well as uh, an architect who has, who has written up these plans, Dan Kazmarek, who's also on the line. Um, the, the goal is to, you know, uh, erect this structure on a, a flat roof in East Boston. Um, I have worked with the uh, Maverick Central Neighborhood Association as oh, hold well on. as- We will hear all that from, um, okay. from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. What I want to hear from you is first, who will have access to that deck? How is it going to be accessed? And finally, is it visible from the street? Yes. So, so a few things. It will be uh, the access will be for the third floor unit itself. Um, that access goes off of an exist, existing deck structure that uh, is already in place. So, it will be an extension out from the backyard um, and have a, a a large staircase that you can see here that will go up, you know, to the left and then uh, take a right and go up onto the the roof itself. Um, we have pulled the dimensions back to, I, I believe, what is the, the restricted area so that it's not viewable from the, from the street. Um, and I guess 
yeah, okay. as, you, as you go through here, they some of the and you know, one last answers. question. And just for the record, let me note that Ms. Dong is on, so we have a full board. Okay, um, so uh, let's just see um, when was this building construct constructed? So, 220 Haver Street, I think the original construction was back in, I, I don't have it in front of me, but it's in the 1920s. Okay, um, good. Okay. But there's, there's a, you know, a number of improvements that have happened to the property, um, including to the third floor unit back in 2015 to 2016. Um, and were there, and did that, with the, that amendment or that change come to this board? For the, for the actual change to the, to the third floor back in, yeah. in 2015, no, yeah. that was, that was approved through, through the inspectional services department. I, I don't believe, Thanks. thinking Thank you. back that I went through the CDA. How are the plans, uh, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are fine. No question. I guess, well, I guess I have one question. Um, the, the addition of the stair to the roof is it's sort of a little different because you're, you're doing it outside of the existing stairwell is did you guys look at potentially putting that on the inside i mean i, I see you have a roof cover but just wondering if you know you're pushing back toward there's some large trees back there i didn't know if there was a, another alternative for that access up um encroaching out further into the backyard yeah so it, and maybe i can let uh Dan and Matt talk on this, but for, from our perspective, when we looked at it, we did think of potentially having the, the stairway go up, you know, erase that roof and go up. I think there was a couple things, one with the, the potential of the landing and not having the applicable amount of stairs to get to that height um, was, was a bit of a challenge without us extending out beyond the, the left side of the building. Okay. Um, That's fine. And, That's fine. I just yeah. want to make sure we, it was looked um, no further questions for me. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Natalia Benitez with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. <laughs> the applicant met with the Maverick Center Neighborhood Association in February 2022. Feedback was positive and the association voted in favor of the project. The applicant also had an abutters meeting scheduled for um, March 1st, and there were no attendees. So at this moment, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary, we have that letter from Jeffrey's point in favor. Madam Chair, I have no raised hands. May I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. Um, um, the BPDA recommends design review. Really? Okay. Yep. Yeah. The dimensions I, I, and railing layout. Okay. Okay, so um I'll, I'll second a, that with the uh, with design review. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. We're all set. Um just for you know, I do for, forgive me, Jeff uh, Hampton, but are you on this call too? Jeff? Uh, can, 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 can somebody confirm whether Jeff Hampton is? I am, Madam Chair. Oh, sorry, Thank Jeff. You. Okay. Yeah, okay. So it's it's um, a dull day, so I know we're all in the slow lane in some way. So, okay. <laughs> Madam Chair, I don't know if you want to check to see if Mr. D'Amico was on. Uh, yes, I did see. Uh, Mr. D'Amico, are you on? Yes, I'm on. Okay. Here it goes. Okay, so if, if, uh, if, uh, okay, so let's, let's continue. Sorry, go okay. ahead. No, calling the next case, calling VOA 1288053, 325 to 327 Sumner Street. This is a change of arc from a two family residential dwelling to an office with one residential unit above. Violations Article 27D, this is in the East Boston iPod. Article 53, Section 8, you know, like regulations. And Article 53, we'll Section 6 and Section. Possibly five. Yeah. yeah, it might be worth having a conversation with them before new I business hours goes. Can, yeah. can I can I uh, just have uh, everybody mute? We are receiving and we are hearing things that I don't think this board should be hearing because people are not adequately muted. So please make sure you mute yourself. Okay? 
Um, so go ahead. Who is Give an address for the record, please. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Richard Linz, 245 Sumner Street, East Boston, on behalf of the petitioner. Uh, Madam Chair, this is a property that is a pre-existing non-conforming structure located in the Jeffreys Point section of East Boston. Our proposal um, would modify the existing two-unit building uh, back to what we understand to be the original uh, programming for this, this building. Uh, we would change the lower level from a residential use to a uh, professional office uh, commercial use uh, while maintaining the upper level as a residential unit. Uh, this is located at 3F2000 neighborhood district. Um, while the two family isn't allowed use, the change to the commercial use, the lower level, uh, is not permitted in the 3F2000 district. I would submit, and the board uh, can see from many of the photos here, that uh, a lot of the character along this section of Summer Street actually does have ground level commercial. Uh, we feel that the use that we're proposing is uh, probably the least intense use you could have here. So a uh, proposed professional office, real estate, or attorney's office uh, is the uh, proposed use. So um, Mr. Mr. Lins, may I ask you a question? Sure. Um, I think the zoning is aspirational that this become residential. Is there no, um, and stay residential, is there no options for office space on, um, on the uh, commercial districts in proximity? Uh, I think it's relatively limited. Uh, there isn't a lot of, I mean, the, the nearest commercial district uh, is Maverick Square. Um, there is not well, a lot of options there. I, I feel like uh, a lot of yeah. 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 I think you need to, uh, yeah, I think, I think everybody, I think every, you four need to be on the same page. And yeah. Like, I need to call. Uh, please go ahead. Um, uh, sorry about that. Yeah, if we could just jump to that next next slide that actually shows the rendering. So I was saying uh, that Maverick Square um, is the nearest commercial district. Uh, there is not a lot of uh, available commercial space in that square. Most of it is already currently occupied um, and not you know not really subject to any further development right now. Um, this being a very modest space, um, we, we presented this obviously to the community. I'll let uh, the mayor's office discuss that, uh, but we will you know we will. Uh, be providing something that uh, does does certainly we think fit with the character of what's on that section of Summer Street presently. And is this a forbidden or conditional use in this district? So professional offices are not allowed. So forbidden use. They are, they are forbidden use. Correct. Okay. Um, because it's always hard for us to justify a um, a residential use flipping over to a commercial use. And Madam Chair, I do, I do uh, in, a in a residential zoning district. I, I do appreciate that. I think um, just th this section of Sumner Street uh, certainly is a distinction with a difference. That first block of Sumner, as you come into Jeffries Point, does have uh, commercial character at the ground level. Uh, many of these properties were, as I said, uh, mostly commercial at the lower level with residential above, and many of those have been either converted back or just maintained. I, I, I agree with you that as you get deeper into Jeffrey's Point, uh, certainly this would not be uh, a consistent type of use to the surrounding residential area, but this first block of Summer Street is uh, ha has a good amount of commercial space at the lower levels. Uh, we feel that this would be a consistent, uh, a consistent use. Okay, how are the plans, uh, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are fine. Um, no questions uh, on the proposed scope. Any questions from the board? Um, is anybody here to either speak in support or in opposition of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Natalia Benitez with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The applicant met with the Jeffers Point Neighborhood Association in November and December of 2021. Members stated that it was really nice to see a creative use of the space without changing the footprint, and the association voted in favor of the project. The abutters meeting was scheduled for March 2022. Abutters were pleased with the design of, of the facade at a blend as it blends well with the character of the street. At this moment, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. And Madam Chair, Secretary, here we have the letter from Jeffrey Point. Support. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Danina from Councilor Edwards' office, City of Boston. We would like to go on, um, on the record in support of this project. Like, 
I'd like to make a motion to approve. Hold on, hold on. Let's just wait for Miss Ambassador. Yep, I have no raised hands at the moment. Okay, go ahead, uh, make, Joe. Make a motion to approve a BPDA design review. I'll second that, Eric. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, I, I, go ahead. I, for the record, will put my, I will put my opposition on the record. M motion carries. Thank you. On the next case, calling DOA 1289288, 95 Bonds Avenue. Building is currently a two-story, two-family building with partially finished attic space on the third floor. They would like to add a dormer to complete the interior remodel and a third floor attic space and also add a roof deck. The violation Article 53, Section 9, with dimensional regulations, the number of allowed habitable stories has been exceeded. Article 53, Section 2, roof structure restriction, and Article 2017 5, this is in the East Boston I Clause. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, good morning again, Madam Chair. Richard Linz, 245 Sumner Street, East Boston, on behalf of the petitioner. Uh, Madam Chair, this is a pre existing two family dwelling. Uh, in, in a 2F4000 district, so a conforming use, uh, generally a conforming structure is owner occupied. Uh, the owners uh, with their expanding family are looking to uh, create some additional uh, living space in the upper level and have proposed to dormer the top, uh, top level of the building. It triggers, uh, I believe, uh, two violations. The first is the uh, roof, rooftop restrictions as well as the uh, height of the building. Even though the design that uh, our architect has approached uh, for the site uh, pretty much keeps the character of the building, uh, notwithstanding the dormers. Uh, it is considered a three-story building and therefore requires uh, relief for the half-story uh, in the 2F district. Um, 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 Councillor, can you please tell um, tell us which uh, site or which page we should be looking at to see um, what... Sure. You can go the, yep, the next page here does show the, do the proposed dormers. Okay. Uh, so again, maintaining most of the roof design uh, we are proposing a roof deck above the upper level that would be accessed uh, not, not by head house um, and uh, again this would be part of the second level unit just expanding the total floor space uh, in that upper level for the uh, owner occupant um, again we're, we're not proposing to change anything with respect to the occupancy of this building or the physical footprint beyond its current boundaries all of the changes and modifications will occur within that envelope of that third level uh, can you please speak to the roof deck? What is the dimensions? Um, how exactly is it accessed and sure. is it visible from the street? Sure, we could probably slide down to the plan. I do have a roof plan, I think, included with our with our plans here. Uh, that's like actually a good photo to show the, uh, the actual roof deck as it would appear from the street. Okay, go ahead. Sure, we can go down to the uh, roof plan uh, a few pages further down, please. Uh, yeah, I think it's two two more pages further down. There we go. So it is accessed by hatch. Uh, it's located within the um, middle most portion of the uh, of the dormered uh, area above the above the attic. Uh, I don't, I can't really see the actual dimension on my laptop. I apologize. It looks like it's about 19 by 21. 19 by 21, yeah. Okay. Uh, so we, do, we do set it back appropriately from both sides uh, so it does not trigger any side yard or rear yard violation. Uh, and of course, it would be sufficiently set back from the street uh, based upon its location in the building. How are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, the plans are fine. No, no question on the proposed uh, dormers or addition. I think the the roof deck is visible because of the character of the house from the street. I don't, I'm not sure that's hideable, but I think if, if this is approved, I think BPDA could uh, maybe help them with the uh, vis visual sort of aspect of that. But no other real questions for the proposal. Um, any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Natalia Benitez with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The applicant met with the Orient Heights um, Neighborhood Association, Neighborhood Council, pardon me, in February and received a vote in support. The abutters meeting took place in March and abutters liked the roof and believed this project would be a good addition to the neighborhood. 
At this time, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Yamina. I'm Councilor Leah Edwards' office, City of Glass, and we put on a record in support. Madam Chair, I have no raised hands at the moment. May I have a motion, please? Sure. Motion to approve a BPDA design review. I'll okay. second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Madam Chair. Members of the board, have a good day. You too. Calling the next case, calling DOA 126 2450 18 Cordes Street. This to confirm as a one family and change to a two family. Existing condition and replace the existing sunroom and deck and kitchen renovations. The violations Article 62, Section 8, side yards insufficient, and Article 62, Section 8, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. He's on um, Joseph, I sent a request to unmute you. I was trying to make you a panelist earlier. All right. Scott, are you here for this proposal as well? Are you representing the applicant? I just sent a request to unmute you. I see your hand. Yes, raised. this is Scott Vaughn. I am Go ahead. the architect of Vaughn Associates Architecture 1. Mifflin Place in Cambridge and speaking on behalf of the owners. Um, as noted, this uh, request has two parts. The first is to convert from a single family to a two family. Uh, this is a 3F2000 district. Uh, the owners have had the long standing impression they had a two family. And when we made the application for the improvements to the sunroom and the deck, they discovered was on record as a single family and they would like to have it converted to a two family. As regards okay. the work in the rear yard. Hold on a minute. Can you um, please uh, describe to us, is there any occupancy in the basement? And what, yes. are, the, and what are the sizes of each unit? I do not have the size of the unit. The, the basement unit is a small studio, no separate bedroom. Um, you can see it in the, uh, the plan that you're showing. Um, ho, ho, can you hold on a second, Mr. Robinson? Are these plans adequate? Uh, no, I, I was gonna try to step in. Um, I, I agree that I, with the BPA assessment that the plans are inadequate to review a oh. proposed because um, we don't have the full plans of the building. We don't understand the studio unit. I didn't even know there was a studio unit. So um, with the BPA, I, I would recommend a deferment um, of this case for more information. To May I have a second? second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. The date, please. Uh, hold on, Madam Chair. Uh, we are into June 21st. Okay, at 1130. At 1130, uh, correct. So, um, please, uh, Mr. Robinson, can you be precise what this applicant needs to submit so we can do a thorough review of this proposal? Sure, I think we need full plans of the, of the building um, and including um, elevations and, and sections so we can understand the, the relationship. and. It's a little hard to understand exactly the proposed addition in relationship to a reference of a greenhouse. So I think we just need more information in the in the drawing set to better assess the, the, the overall project proposal. And if, there's, and if there's occupancy in the basement, we need to know the floor to ceiling height, floor to sill height, and all the other information that we need to know that that is a legitimate unit, okay? Uh, next case, please, Mr. Fortune. Calling the next case, calling DOA 130 6134 160 West Canton Street. This is at a rear balcony at Paula Level, projected six foot from the rear facade of the building. Mm -hmm. the violations Article 64.9.4, Townhouse Railroad Extension into the rear. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Mark Lacasse, Lacasse Law, 75 Arlington Street in Boston, attorney for the homeowners. Eric and Dara Wolkoff. Um, this is a request for a conditional use permit for a single rear balcony 
projecting off the what is the essentially parlor level first story there shown on the plans, uh, the middle diagram. It is the standard six foot projecting from the rear facade of the building supported by cantilever brackets. Um, and that is the sole zoning issue before you today. How are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Plans are as described, it's bracket uh, mounted, no questions. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Hi, oh, yes. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Kim Crusilli from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The Mayor's Office would like to defer to the board on this matter. An abutters meeting was held on March 8th, where support was shown by the abutters as well as the Pipeline Neighborhood Association. Thank you. Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board. Anna Calderon from Council President's Phoenix Office. The councilor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. <clears throat> Madam Chair, Secretary, we have one letter of support. Thank you. Madam Chair, no raise hands. Thank you. May I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you so much. Calling the next case, calling BOA 129 9341, 27 to 29, Isabella Street. This is an installation of a 10 foot by 25 foot cedar pergola. Structure with an open slat wall consisting of four posts and beams, rafters, and brackets, and a retractable shade canopy. The violations Article 63, Section 20, roof structure restrictions, and Article 9, Section 1, extension of a non conforming building. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, good morning, Mr. Secretary, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Joe Anley, 28 State Street in Boston. With me is uh, the property owner and applicant, Amar Tana. Uh, as well as David uh, Velkacic, who is the designer. Um, may I give you a brief overview, Madam Chair? Yes, please go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, so this uh, is an existing uh, five-story building that was constructed in 2018 in the Bay Village neighborhood. Um, it's a nine-unit building. My client, the applicant, uh, owns Unit 9 on the top uh, floor. There is an existing roof deck with an existing headhouse um, and what we are proposing is to place a open pergola uh, that was spread into the record is about 225 square feet of area that would be tucked next to and back on the roof next to the existing headhouse and uh, would be done in a way that is consistent with the historic district uh, a four post structure and um, in the presentation you have um, the next page down shows you where this would be located uh, on the roof. We also did uh, a walk around in the neighborhood as consistent with the uh, request. Mr. Henley, can I just back up and ask a couple of questions? Yes, so ma'am. This building was constructed in 2018. Yes, ma'am. And was it constructed fully in compliance with, I'm assuming there was relief from this board? Yes, ma'am. So the second um, zoning issue that is required is the extension of the non-conforming structure. Uh, mm -hmm. This is an MFR district that limits the height at 35. It's a five-story building that obviously exceeds that. So you're correct. They got relief for the height. Um, and um, this pergola, uh, because it's going on top of the roof, um, requires uh, relief for that. It is a residential use, obviously. It's also situated in a way that doesn't have any visual impacts. And uh, there's also an existing uh, head house of similar height. Okay. Um, okay. How are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are good. I think it's uh, actually a very uh, nice proposal. Just to confirm, the roof deck, however, was approved, and that, that's existing, correct? We're correct. Calling... Okay. Because the yes, existing access point is the existing stair head house, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Yep. Um, I have no other questions. Thanks. Any any questions from the board? Yeah, I, I, I think I, I guess I think I know the answer to this. But is the height of the the top of the head house even with the top of the pergola? Right. Same height. Right. Yep. Is that a common roof deck? No. Uh, it's a private roof deck for unit nine. Okay. 
Just it Wait. seems like a, quite a large pergola, ten by twenty-five. Is a... Yeah, I mean, so if you look at the uh, plan, it's it's the deck is obviously much larger. Uh, this is a a corner building, if you will. There's a corner of a private uh, courtyard, and so the deck is actually includes sort of a triangular. I mean, the pergola, excuse me, has a small triangular section and then a rectangular section so that it's sort of broken up and situated in a way that doesn't have visual impact, um, if that's a concern with respect to the size of it, um, Mr. Ruggiero. And then we have plans, you know, uh, simulations from around the neighborhood as well um, that show the, the lack of visible impact. Any other questions? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Hi, yes. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Um, Kim Krizoy from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, the Mayor's Office would like to defer to the board on this matter. An abutters meeting was held in March of 2022 where no opposition was shown by the abutters. They also received a letter of non-opposition from the Bay Village Neighborhood Association. Thank you. Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board. Anna Calderon from Council President's Flink's office. The councilor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we have one letter of support. Madam Chair, I have no raised hands. Jeff, would you like to go on the record? Mr. Hampton. Uh, thank you, Matt. Yep, thank you, Madam Chair. Multitasking today, I, my apologies. Uh, we are on the record uh, for approval with design review. Um, we had a case like this I think a couple of months ago in Dorchester where the pergola was very large. We just want to make sure that this is going to be a pergola. We'd like to do some sort of design review on it. Um, and if it's subject to any uh, review by the Bay Village Historic District Commission, we'd like to have them take a look at it as well. But we're in the record uh, for approval. Thank you. May I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve with BPDA design review um, as noted. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Calling the next case, calling BOA 128 7036 1759 to 1763 Washington Street. This is a change of occupancy to a multifamily residential, 76 units, commercial restaurant used on the ground floor. Restore the historic facade and existing building, construct a new addition above the existing structure up to 13 floors, and infill the adjoining parcels, two parcels to be combined. The violation is Article 50, Section 28. The restaurant use is conditional. Article 50, Section 29, the additional lot area is insufficient. Article 50, Section 29, the floor to air ratio is excessive. Article 50, Section 29, the building height is excessive in stories. Article 50, Section 29, the building height is excessive in feet. Article 50, Section 29, the usable open space is insufficient. Article 50, Section 29, the front yard is insufficient. Article 50, Section 29, the side yard is insufficient. And Article 50, Section 29, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Mark Lacasse, Lacasse Law, 75 Arlington Street in Boston. Attorney for the applicant, the Alexandra Partners, LLC. And with me on the meeting is Tom Callis and Jazz Bogle, the two principals of Alexander Partners, and D'Artanian Brown from Embark, the architect for the project. I'm sure this building is familiar to everyone on the board. It is the former Alexandra Hotel at the corner of Washington Street and Massachusetts Avenue. It was last before this board in September of 2019 when the same zoning relief before you today was approved by the board, except at that time, the proposal was for a 158 room hotel. Um, the project proceeded through BPDA design review and South and Landmarks Commission review in the fall of 2019. And the matter had proceeded to a full set of construction drawings for the construction of the hotel as approved. And then of course, COVID in March of 2020, substantially changed the outlook for construction of a hotel. Um, the financing was uh, withdrawn and the investors pulled out. Um, uh, Mr. Lacasse, can you get to the core of the issue here and describe what is being proposed today 
um, and the breakdown of the units, um, how many um, square feet foot footage, and the number of IDP units. Certainly, Madam Chair. So thus, a decision was made to pivot to the use before you today, which is a res multifamily residential use, which is allowed under this section of the code. Um, there are 76 units that are proposed. 33 of those are under the compact unit policy, and 43 of those are regular sized units for a total of 76. There are 10 IDP units, um, and that is subject to our BPDA approval of the notice of project change, and the IDP units are described in the BPDA board memo, which is part of the record, approving the notice of project change on October 14 of 2021. The IDP so, unit. Um, so can you talk to us, please, um, because you did say 33 were um, under compact living and 43 were regular. Can yes. you give us the breakdown in each category? Yes. So the breakdown is as follows. There are 15 studios, 37 one bedrooms, 11 one bedroom plus office and 13 two bedrooms for a total of 76 units. And then the breakdown of the IDP units is there are four. Uh, no, 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 please, um, I, I, I need to get to the point. I need to understand what the breakdown is in each category. The, the uh, micro units or the small units and the larger units so that I know what how many studios, et cetera, and what the square footage is in each category. Yes, I'll, I'll ask D'Artagnan Brown, the architect, to jump in on that one with the breakdown um, by the unit mix. D'Artagnan? Mr. Ambassador, has he been able to get on? What's the name, I'm sorry? D'Artagnan Brown, D-A-R-T-A-G-N-A-N Brown. Here, one second. All right, I sent a request to unmute you. Go ahead. Hello, Madam Chair. Members of the. Can everyone see me or hear me? Yes, yes. just go ahead, please. Good, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. So, within the breakdown of the studio units, uh, out of the 15, eight are under the compact, out of the one bedrooms. 37 of those, 24 are compact. The one bedroom pluses, we have 11 of those, zero are compact. And out of the two bedrooms, uh, of the 13 count, one is compact. Okay, and tell us what compact, the, the dimensions of the compact studio is. Uh, certainly the compact studio, I'm just grabbing my chart if you bear with me one second, is 410 square feet, typically. So we can go to the plans. Um, so they just, uh, they are 410 square feet. Okay. The one bedrooms are around 533 square feet. This uh, two bedroom, there's one of those uh, is 692 versus the average of 960. Most of the average of 960 is, is the normal size and the Correct. two bedrooms. Yeah. Um, so there were 13 two bedrooms, so 12 of them are. Um, and was there any thought to larger units uh, for families, three bedrooms? Whoever Maybe wants to answer this. Maybe. Yeah, Maybe Madam Chair. To the, Tom or Mark. Yeah. Uh, the the tower if you will that rises above the existing historic building is a very narrow floor plate so converting the previously approved hotel footprint you know nothing has changed about the size or the dimensions of the building and given the size of the floor plates um, the larger unit was was not part of the mix um, and to satisfy some of the transportation demand management issues thus the 43% of the units being compact to sort of also satisfy a desire expressed by a lot of the community in the in the very many meetings that we had that there be some more affordable units in addition to the IDP units so some of the 
compact units satisfy that goal as well. So it really was trying to balance all of the competing interests that were brought to bear, arriving at the mix that we have. And so the breakdown of the IDPs, can you give us the percentages? Percentage of the whole? Uh, uh, the, the type of units in this. The type of unit, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes, so there, there are 10 IDP units, which I indicated four are compact and six are standard size. And at what level of affordability? 50% are at up to 80% of AMI and 50% are up to 100% uh, AMI. And those, those numbers are all established um, by our BPDA approval memo, which was um, arrived out in consultation with the IDP program manager at the BPDA. And how does um, the compact price point compare to the IDP price points? Well, can, can we just back up? Can you just say what type of units? They're compact and standard, but are they the, the studios, the one beds, or the two beds, the IDP units? There, there's a mix. There's a mix, Ms. Panato, in direct proportion to the same proportion as the market rate units. That's the IDP formula. They assign the same proportion of IDP units as exist on the market rate side. So the same ratio. So, so, so can you make that easy on us and tell us exactly the breakdown then? Thank you. Yes. Um, let me get the BPDA board memo, which spells that out. For example, there is, sorry about that. Bertanian, do you have that at your fingertips? Uh, I do not, but I can look at it. Okay. The BPDA board memo? Yeah. It spells out the... Madam the Chair, can I ask a question in the meantime while they're looking for that? Sure. Um, the compact living unit uh, guidelines uh, uh, require a trade-off of uh, common space in order to make up for the s small size of the units what how has this design uh, accomplished that can i yes. can i add one more on top of that mr early can you uh, hold um, on, mr robinson hold on a minute i don't know if they have the bandwidth <laughs> well mine's, in, mine's, <laughs> on, mine's on the amenity space is the is, okay, under ahead. compact living is the compact living i understand if you have one unit in a building it triggers the nest the requirement of the amenity to cover the all of the units. Can, while you're explaining the amenity, can you show us where they are? And is the totality of the amenity space um, covering all of the units in terms of the square footage requirement? So it's a it's a build on on Mark's question. That's fine. Thanks. Okay. So um, let's let's get to the IDP units and then let's get to the common space. Uh, Madam Chair, I could answer the common space while Mark pulls up the. Uh, Go ahead. Go ahead. And is it possible to have camera at all? Sorry. Can you just explain it to us? Tell us sure, what Sure, absolutely. Point. I was just trying tell to point. What so page we on have, the, um, hold on. Mr. Brown, can you tell us what page of the drawing we should go to so we understand what the amenity space looks like? He's on mute. I just made him a panelist. Yeah, so if you don't mind going to the floor plans. So to answer uh, both questions raised, we do meet the full requirement of amenities um, space uh, following the guidelines off the entry lobby and then throughout the building for the entire unit count. We actually exceed it. I can pull up exact numbers, but if we go down to the first floor, uh, up another page, if you oh, a couple more pages. There we go. So uh, off on the right, that's a, that's a good page, thank you. So when you enter through the lobby right off of the south of the page, I can, uh, right where the entry point is to the vestibule, there is building amenities right there, uh, in addition to concierge and, and requirements for high rise, et cetera. So we have uh, entry right upon uh, entry sequence. Uh, in addition to that, we have kind of the, the full compliance around the bike compact and the city's policy on the bike parking. So that's also located on this floor. As you move up through the building, 
you don't mind going to the next sheet. And, and what is the programming on the humanity space? So we have um, a, a, on the top floor, we have a, a lounge center uh, recreation outdoor space off of the deck that was um, in the previous design. So none of those components have changed. Um, we have a fitness center. We have a kind of work from home Wi-Fi bar set up as well. The fitness center is on the second floor and then the kind of Wi-Fi cafe lounge is on the first floor. Hey, uh, Mr. LaCasse, are you ready with those IDP numbers? Indeed, Madam Chair, and sorry about that, members of the board. I have the um, BPDA board memo, which shows the breakdown of the IDP units. There are four studios, five one-bedrooms, and one two-bedroom. And indeed, the um, AMI split for those are 80%, up to 80% for half of those, and up to 100% for the other half. And I can be more specific if you'd like, and the sales prices are again expressed in the board memo and based on the um, the HUD and BPDA prices, maximum sales price based on the AMI level for each of the 80% and 100% breakdown. So yeah. uh, let me let me just uh, let's see if we can understand how these compact units fit into the scheme here, as far as price points is concerned. You want me to recite the price points for the? Yes, right. compact, yep, that are, that are that are not IDP. Oh, compact that are not IDP? Yep. Well, the, um, I'll, let, I'll let my clients address that, but those will be based on, you know, market rate at the time the building is built, um, and it would be reflective of the price per square foot um, for similarly, um, similar units in the neighborhood uh, but Tom or Jazz, do you want to give uh, just an example? Yes. Hi, Tom Callis here. Thank you. Um, the units are going to range between half a million uh, um, dollars, and uh, the larger ones will be closer to a million dollars. Okay. Ms. Panada, you had a question, additional question? I do. I don't understand the formula. So um, there's 15 studios and then... 48 one bedrooms, but there's four studio IDP units and, and five one bedrooms. Why aren't there more one bedrooms given the proportionate number of one bedrooms in the building? And uh, Mr. Lacasse, just clarify because you might have given us numbers just for the compact. Um, and so we need to understand that or just for the standards. I don't know. Everything. Oh, well, that was yet. total, I think. Yeah, that's what I think. studios, 37 one beds, 11 one beds with offices. Yeah, so just um, give us a breakdown, please. Okay, again, the, um, the IDP unit mix is determined by the BPDA staff. So what we're trying to understand is that, you know, we're trying to connect the dots. And if there's an issue with connecting the dots, we just need to know that. And perhaps the BPDA needs to know that. But, you know, we'll, we'll leave it at that for now. Um, Ms. Bernardo, you're going to be doing some math over there in the meantime? Well, it's clear that it's not proportionate. You yep. Know. Yeah. And let me just ask you another question. Um, was there an issue with that rear entrance the last time you were here? Because you were proposing to use that, did I remember correctly, as handicapped access? And has that been resolved? Um, yes, Madam Chair. The, the rear, the handicap access that you're recalling relates to the immediately adjacent abutting property, which is owned by Tenants Development Corporation. Mm -hmm. um, and as part of a separate agreement with TDC that we have entered into and that is confirmed, um, the project is making substantial upgrades to Comet Place, which is the alley behind uh, that runs parallel behind the Mass Ave buildings, includes the TDC rear access point for its um, tenants who need handicap access. And part of the agreement is to also uh, substantially upgrade those access points 
sidewalks, the street of Comet Place, and those agreements were separately entered into with Tenants Development Corp as the direct and immediate abutter. The loading dock, which was originally proposed, was uh, going to be a high impact loading dock for hotel use, which would have entailed multiple deliveries a day. Of course, the residential use will have a much lower impact for the loading dock, just for trash bi-weekly and ordinary move in and move out for the residents. And this is a condo building, not rental. So that is expected once you know the building is, is occupied to be a much lower impact use than the loading dock for the hotel would have been. Okay, and then I don't remember, but was there the equivalent of a penthouse unit on this building or a upper floor enclosed deck or anything? Um, there, there was going to be a restaurant on the top floor with an outdoor patio. Now the, that, the floor Deep area, the floor area sure. of, I'm yeah, sorry. I can explain this. So to the left there on this page, in this, right in the center to the right of that stairwell, the center stairwell, that is the amenity space for the residents with the, the deck right off of it. And then we do have four residential units on this floor, all within the uh, original footprint. And is this is the top floor, Mr. Brown? Correct, on the left. Okay, okay, thank uh, you. Uh, how are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, the plans are good. I think they, they definitely represent, as we've discussed, the units and the amenity space as outlined by the proponent. Um, no questions for me on that scope. Any additional questions from the board? It seems like an awful lot of compact living units. Yeah, I'm, I'm in agreement with you and not enough IDP units. Is um, anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Hi, yes. Um, good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. Kim Crucioli from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The Mayor's Office would like Kim, to defer Kim, to the board on this matter. Kim, yeah. could you hold on for one minute? Because I do know that Nick Carter is on. Nick, are you the project manager on this for the BPDA? Yes, I am. Okay, Nick, can you please, uh, I, I think you might have heard what our comments were. Can you clarify some, something for us on the IDPs? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we worked specifically with this project um, on their ratio of IDP units, um, both compact and non-compact. Uh, we felt that providing more non-compact uh, units as uh, mostly one and two beds, uh, mostly one beds, uh, was the appropriate way to go with this. And, um, you know, we felt comfortable uh, with the IDP designation uh, on this, and including um, in the AFFH, the affordable, uh, sorry, the affirmatively furthering fair housing uh, agreement, uh, it, they agreed to provide all IDP units on site um, exceed proportion of two bed units um, that are present in the community, um, increase the number of fully built group two units accessible to persons with disabilities, um, and to provide a preference for first generation home buyers in the IDP units. Um, so we felt that this was an appropriate mix and uh, destination. So uh, just a couple of follow up questions. Um, can you give us the breakdown of IDP units, both in the compact category and in the non-compact category? Absolutely. Um, so there are three compact studios, one full-size studio, one compact one bed, four regular one beds, and one two bed unit. One two bed unit is which is compact or standard? Standard. Okay, one two bed. Correct. Ms. Spinato, do those numbers add up for you? Well, given the, the proportion overall in the project of, of studios to one beds plus one beds with offices, and are there any one, one beds with offices in the IDP cap? Uh, I'm afraid that's not. Uh, designated in our breakdown. It looks like there are several that are uh, significantly bigger than some of the others, so I would assume that is with that office component. 
And, and there isn't sort of, you take the percentage of studios and the percentage of one beds and then use those percentages to calculate the IDP. It seems like in this case, you're, you're, you know, you're more weighted on studios than you are on one beds in the IDP count. Um, there are more one beds in the IDP count. We do typically try and have, um, advocate for bigger units in that IDP mix, um, but we, you know, obviously studios are an important part of that as well. Um, but again, in this case, there are uh, more one beds than studios. Well, there's one more one bed. I'm asking you to look at the percentage. Yes. There's 15 studios, there's 48 one beds, but there's only one. Oh, digital. yes, I, right. I, I, yeah, I understand uh, the question. Um, again, it, it does depend on the, uh, the building and the project, uh, but again, we do feel like this is an appropriate mix for this project. And yeah. again, uh, Nick, um, I think you've understood from us that we have kind of issues about compacts, the number of compacts and the lack of three bedrooms. Um, is there, can you just talk through the rationale behind this? Because um, well and good to deal with couples and maybe a couple with a baby, but you know, if we're looking for long-term residential living, um, you know, what, what was the thought behind the lack of three bedrooms in this, in this building? Um, I would defer to the project team on that. Uh, you know, we do obviously advocate for uh, larger units, but as uh, we were working with them, it did not seem to make sense for this project to include um, an increased number of three bed units. Okay. Okay. Uh, Madam, Ch Madam Chair, on that yes. point. This was originally a proposal for a hotel um, where obviously rooms are smaller. So it seems to me that what the project team decided to do was to try to minimize, to try to uh, basically not change the footprint of the, of the uh, rooms they had because, but they were hotel rooms, they weren't residential living. And I think we have a problem there. That, is, that was part of the, uh, the calculus, yes. Okay, so right now let's go back to, um, to hear from people and support our opposition. Um, sorry, um, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, and then I'd like to hear from State Representative Santiago, um, Mayor's Office, and, um, and, and yes, and then we'll hear from City Council too. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. Kim Crusilli from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The Mayor's Office would like to defer to the board on this matter. We've received both letters of support and opposition for this project. The support comes mostly from the South End and some Roxbury residents who would like to see this area develop as it's been abandoned for many years. And the opposition is mostly from Roxbury regarding the community process. This was a project that completed BPDA community process and had numerous public meetings over the past few years. Thank you. Do we have any other elected officials looking to speak before we open up the floor to uh, Rep. Santiago, go ahead. Great. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the board. Uh, I want to go on record in support of this project. Um, as was stated previously, um, that this particular area is not only in the district that I represent, but I also live nearby. It's been one um, that has effectively been dead for uh, decades. And for a whole host of reasons, there have been challenges to develop this area. Um, and um, I would argue that this project, over the course of its many years, um, that it's been in discussion with the community, uh, there have been multiple, many meetings, I think there have been about 40 up to 50. And from my experiences in these community meetings, talking to neighbors, working with different stakeholders, there's a robust amount of um, support for this project, particularly given the consideration of what Washington can be moving down from South End to Roxbury. And so that's why I'm here today in support of this project. And, and, um, and I hope uh, members of the board will feel the same way. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, Chair, members of the board, Joshua McFadden, Councilor Anderson's office, I'd like to go on record and support as well. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we do have multiple letters of support and opposition. The opposition seems to be parking high in the building. Madam Chair, uh, Joe McEachern, City Council, Frank Baker's office. Uh, although this project isn't directly in the council's district, it abuts uh, very closely to, to our district. Um, after conversations with 
um, constituents in the area in uh, Worcester Square and some of the abutting neighborhoods, the uh, council would like to go on record in support of the application. I'll open it the floor up to uh, people whose hands are raised here. Um, Carol Blair, I'll start with you. Can you give your name and address for the record, please? Thank you. This is Carol Blair, president of Chester Square Neighbors, the host community for this project. I live at 222 Northampton Street, a block from the Alexandra. I appreciate the work you all are asked to do. Without the ZBA, improvements to my home would not be possible because our 19th century row house does not conform to 20th century zoning. But I understand there are limits to what you can approve. Zoning Article 7-3 allows the Zoning Board of Appeal to grant a variance if it is the minimum variance necessary and it will not be harmful to the community. Here we must ask, is the proposed 150-foot tower in a historic district allowing 70 feet necessary for reasonable use of the property? I'm here because new information challenges the widespread belief that the Alexandra Hotel is structurally unsound and should be replaced with a tower to finance preservation of the facade. On March 31st, 2022, Alexandra Partners shared a link to hundreds of photos of the exterior and interior of the Alexandra. This email has been shared broadly. I am surprised at how good the interior looks, and videos showed people without hard hats not watching their step. I've also learned that the South End Landmarks Commission requested a structural report, and the landmark files do not include such a report. Is the structure reasonably sound? Could it be gutted and rehabbed? possibly adding a couple of stories. Perhaps the lesser variances could, could be considered, but I'm aware of substantial financial support on the develop, uh, financial pressure on the development team and of zealous support for the project. So I respectfully request that if you choose to approve the requested variances, you attach two conditions. First, to minimize car ownership and competition for scarce parking Rent or condo fees will support a variety of transportation benefits, including a choice of MBTA passes, zip car, blue bikes, and the like. And second, to guarantee that the historical facade survives this ambitious and severely constrained construction project, Alexandra Partners must repair or reconstruct the facade to mitigate any damage during construction. Thank you for your attention. Uh, good morning. Now, Bill. Uh, UNLR, yes, UNLR supports. Uh, they've made an effort, a good effort, to reach out to the community for the benefits in this area with their development. We've seen this structure for many years not be developed, and I understand the, the concerns of uh, uh, other uh, groups that are closer to it. And I really would like to, you know, say that I think they're trying to accommodate uh, those concerns as best as possible. But I feel that progress is best made with getting something on that corner after 20 years or more of looking at it and not seeing anything developed. I uh, like uh, the development team. Uh, they have been responsive and uh, they've made efforts. Uh, they can't do everything, but they've tried many things. and. We would like to strongly support them. I'm president of United Neighbors of Little Roxbury. I've thank, asked you, Mr. thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Singleton. Can we move on? We have a, a number of raised hands. Um, so can we just uh, move on, please? Yeah. Joseph. And, uh, and, 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 and let me ask uh, people who've spoken, please lower your hand. And can I ask everybody whose hands are raised to please give us new information? Um, as, as you know, we still have a number of cases ahead of us, but we don't want to rush through this, but we feel like we need to have adequate information in making our decision. So use your time to give us new information, please. All right, Carol, go ahead. Uh, Can you give your name and record, Carol, Sorry. Are, you, are you looking for Carol Strife? Yes. My name is Carol yes. Strife. I live at 578 Mass Ave. That's approximately 500 feet from the site. My uh, front yard will actually be shaded uh, if the tower is built. Uh, Madam Chair, you and the ZBA approved excessive height for the hotel in 2019, and that decision was based on the conditions that were relevant at that time. You approved 
a lack of open space. In fact, there's no open space in your approval. You approve minimal parking, but those conditions no longer exist. Now there's a, there, now it is residential, not a hotel, but we have no financial data supporting the continuing of the excessive height that was approved originally only to satisfy hotel requirements. We have no revised plan for open space appropriate for condos. We have no workable parking plan. The BRA failed to comply with the legal requirements for public participation. The BRA failed to find the change major and thus require the developer to submit the change project to South End District Landmarks, to BCDC, and to the neighboring community for the required review. I respectfully urge you to defer approval until a complete review has been conducted in compliance with the law. The pressure for speed, I understand that, I'm well aware of that, but it is still not sufficient reason for making a bad decision. Thank you very much. And then now Lloyd, go ahead. Good morning, um, Lloyd Fillion. My address is 563 Massachusetts Avenue, Boston. I'm also a nearby um, property owner. Um, the only thing that I would add to the prior um, statements by Carol Strife is that the application or the approval by the design, I'm sorry, the approval by Landmarks Committee appears to be void at this point because it has a sunset clause which it was given in, 2000, in, uh, in 2019, the end of October, and it is well past the two-year um, sunset provision. So it appears that they would need to reapply to landmarks, which was, as has been mentioned, very concerned about a 13-story, 150 to 160-foot tower in a zone that has a maximum height of Thank you. Thank feet. you. Thank I would you, also sir. like to point out Ricardo Lewis, I sent a request on you, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, this is Ricardo Lewis. Ricardo Lewis Ricardo. of uh, Nubian Square, also the owner of Prevay Parking. We are a parking solution company uh, based in Roxbury. Uh, this group has reached out to us, um, I believe about two years ago, regarding the parking. I know parking is an issue and also a challenge within this development. But we are working closely with this group once it's a, once uh, it gets approved to come up with a parking solution that will accommodate tenants, guests, and also other uh, developments regarding around the area. So I just wanted to state that. Uh, Ricardo, I, my hope is that Nubian Square and the vicinity of Nubian Square doesn't end up being the storage space for for cars and vehicles from this development. I'll just put that out there. But uh, thank you. Uh, next, can we hear from Garrison Trotter? Hi, um, I'm all about process and procedures following the, the um, article that governs us, the Roxbury Street Master Plan. And please, from day put one, your name, please put your name oh, and address on the record. Okay, so Connie Forbes and uh, 47 Wombeck Street. Um, so from day one, this project was designated as being South End rather than Roxbury, which is where it actually does fall and residents were excluded for the first uh, few meetings. Um, the BPDA um, did that intentionally because that was what was brought up in the meetings. Uh, the uh, Roxbury Neighborhood Council, which is a designated legal entity that represents the Roxbury's um, Article 50 area that's been defined by a map, um, was not, I, in 2018, they were, you know, we told the developer to reach out to Roxbury Neighborhood Council. And it wasn't until this year that they reached out to the uh, Roxbury Neighborhood Council, to my knowledge, because we, we try to work with them and ask them the questions like, how has the Alexander Hotel been going? And this year they reached out to them after um, being told in 2018 that this was one under Article 50 and two um, should be brought before the Roxbury Neighborhood Council. So there's a lot of issues. And the Roxbury Neighborhood Council is important to Roxbury residents because they have the zoning knowledge and they have the legal knowledge that perhaps um, typical residents in the area do not have and residents uh, rely on that and and so they were cut out of the process you know pretty much altogether. the iag has not met since this new uh, uh project notice change was made so we polled the iag members and they were not told there was an iag uh, meeting being held so 
how can you move forward with a project? And the BPDA defines it as a minor modification, as mentioned earlier. And if you look at the guidelines for minor modification, this does not qualify for a minor modification. So the request is today, please defer this until the RNC, which has scheduled a meeting with the developer, is able to represent the community in which this project is legally located as part of the Roxbury Strategic Master Plan, which is signed between the city and the Roxbury community. Thank you. I'm going to call on anyone in particular next, Madam Chair. Um, no, um, no, I think we're good. Um, let's just see. So, um, does 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 the representative for the applicant want to put anything in the record in response to the concerns that have been raised? Yes, Madam Chair, just a few items. Um, with respect to the concerns raised by uh, Chester Square uh, to minimize car ownership, part of our compact unit policy requirements under the BPDA approval is a transportation demand management program that includes some of the items that were suggested, and there is agreement to do to do just that. Um, the, with respect to the facade of the building and its structural condition, there have been countless uh, structural engineers that have toured and, and made report on this property. And all of those were in fact part of the South End Landmarks record. Previously, South End Landmarks continues to have jurisdiction over this project. And um, the board should know that when we pivoted from hotel use to residential use, we were instructed specifically by the BPDA architectural staff and the South End Landmarks Commission um, given that this project had been approved by the Boston Civic Design Commission to change nothing. So nothing about what was previously approved with respect to the building, the size of the building, the historic preservation of the building, nothing has changed. Everything is exactly has been previously approved. And on that score, there were 11 different hearings by three different bodies that approved of this project in its configuration as exists. The only thing really that is changing members of the board is that we're going from a conditional use hotel to an allowed use multifamily residential. But all in all other respects, the building is exactly the same because that's what we were told to do by each of the approval authorities that had previously reviewed this um, project and how it will look and how it will appear and every other aspect of the building itself remains unchanged. Um, I think that is the gist of it. Um, oh, on the, the, the parking and working with Mr. Luis's group, there are a number of commercial parking garages that are part of the BU Medical Center facility that have lower utilization rates, and those are the ones that would be um, nearby and available for the valet service that is being proposed for the residential use. And I think that's, that's it. Okay, um, Ms. Ambassador, can you mute everybody, please? But for board members. Thank you. Um, discussion by board members. Um, I, um, what, the okay so we we know there are a number of people in support we've all gotten the letters in, in both in support and, and in opposition but and it sounds like in our discussion the outs the issues that we've heard very clearly are levels of community involvement this is the article 50 zoning district which is the roxbury zoning district and i remember clearly when we had the discussion the first time around on this proposal, there was that tug and pull about the um, intentional inclusion of Roxbury neighbors um, into this in this process. Second, I hear from the board uh, concern about the the num the the compact versus the regular size units, 
um, and the break. And so I think it's it it falls into not only that, but the breakdowns of the one, twos, and threes, and the number of IDPs. Um, so those look like what is outstanding. And then I think the question becomes, you know, um, as counselor said, because it had gone through a BCDC review for the initial design, is that enough reason to continue maintaining the shell? Um, and so, you know, it seems to me that those are the issues. Um, any anything else that you guys want to add or any other conversation that we need to have? Well, I, I would just uh, affirm uh, much of what you said. I actually think the um, original design, the exterior is quite attractive and that has been sitting vacant for a long time. So I really understand why people want to uh, uh, move it forward um, to liven up the, the neighborhood. But um, the issue of the comp number of compact living uh, units, I think there was frankly uh, a desire not to redesign the interior once it became clear it was not going to be a hotel. And that's really not, uh, that's not appropriate. I think there needs to be a revisiting of the number of contact, compact living units and the number the number of IDP units. Uh, I'll, I'll just step in. You know, I think uh, I agree with Mr. Ehrlich in terms of the design and, and sort of the nature of where it is. I've, I've been in the building actually before. I've driven by it for a lot of years as everybody has. I, I, I'm taking a little bit of my cue from the district uh, city councilor and the rep. I think they have listened and, and are part and active in the community um, it, it's obviously not a perfect project in terms of um, the proposal. Uh, I hear some of the concerns, um, but I think that uh, addressing the compact units, I, I don't have a, a, a large issue with that. I think um, these are for sale units, um, and I think they are meeting the requirements of the compact living units as set up by the city um, with the supporting amenity space. So. Um, there is a choice uh, to go into this building um, as a buyer, and I think that um, the the number of IDP units I will I will I understand and, and, and certainly uh, uh, echo um, the discussions that I wish there was more. Uh, um, but I think uh, at this point, this is where we are in terms of the project. Um, okay. Anybody else to pop in with any ideas? Okay, um, so um, let me um, have a motion because the I think I've articulated from what I'd heard all the issues. Um, and so may I have a motion, please? Well, I'm going to make a motion to deny without prejudice and, and ask them to come back with uh, uh, redesigned interior. Um, may I ask, okay, um, is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, two in support of that. Anybody else? Motion? Aye. Um, so Sherry, that's one, two, three, four. Um, is there anybody else to support this? Motion does not carry. May I have a second motion? Madam, Madam Chair, this is Tom. Um, with the denials, that's just a, what we only need five more, five more to approve really uh, a, a civil majority is enough to deny. Um, so that was four, uh, I'm, I'm, I lost my math here. Was that four people in, uh, up in uh, support of the motion? Yes, Madam Chair, it was you, uh, Mark Ehrlich, Sherry Dog, and Gene uh, Donato. Okay, so I need a second, the motion did not carry, so I need a second motion. I don't know if a deferral would work better, um, but a deferral for a time, uh, uh, for a period of time, so that these uh, community issues and other issues can be worked out. So Madam Chair, what I was saying is that uh, only, only four members need to be in support of a motion to deny for it to carry. Uh, there were four members in support of the motion to deny without prejudice. Uh, the five, there do need to be five. So, so, the motion, so the motion carries? 
Yeah, so I do need to be five, I believe, five for the motion to deny without prejudice. So I, I don't know if the board needs to revote as a motion to deny or if the board needs to revote uh, as a deferral for another another date. Uh, so right now, there's enough to deny, but there's not sure. enough to deny without prejudice. Okay. So, so, can, can we, can and, we, our, and our goal was not to deny it. So may I have a motion, yeah. please? Another motion. A motion to defer. Is there a second? Oh. Come on, peeps, help me out. I, oh, I, if, if, if the motion to deny is uh, not a uh, track, I'll, I'll go with defer. Uh, so Sherry made the motion. Um, Mark uh, Ulrich is in support of the motion. I am in support of the motion. Anybody else in support of the motion for deferral? I'll support that deferral, Secretary. Pardon? Jean. So, okay, so motion carries. May I? Let's have a date um, so that it gives the community and the applicant enough time to sort through the issues. Madam Chair, we'll do a July date, July 7th at 11.30. Oh, is that uh, around, uh, okay, that's the week after, right? Correct. Okay, uh, so uh, July 7th at 11.30, okay. Um, does that give the applicant enough time, Mr. I believe, I believe so, Madam Chair, that's... Uh, okay, see you then. Thank you. Madam Chair, this is Tom, just to clarify for the record, is, is this a unanimous motion to defer? Is everyone in support of this motion? No, I'm against them. Uh, the motion to Same. defer, Eric. So yeah. Eric, but but the the rest five five were in support, so it carries. All right, thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, um, can, Mr. Uh, Mr. Fortune, Mr. Secretary, can we go to the ten thirties, please? I was hoping that we could, Madam Chair, but before we hit the one o'clock uh, day time, okay. uh, I'm going to call the ten thirty hearings for any deferrals or withdrawals to ten thirty only. If you can yes, give us the Mr. address Fortune. for us, please. Yes, Mr. Fortune. The address is 99 Erie Street. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> I'll give you a name today. Mr. Lilla. Mr. KCLA 125 99 Erie Street. Name and address for the record, please. Morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Derek Small. I have a business address at 51 Dobson Road. Madam Chair, we are here seeking a deferral of this matter. Um, again, uh, being in contact with the ZBA office. This uh, project needs to be re-advertised, and thus we are seeking the deferral. Is there a second? Is there a motion, please? I'll make a motion to defer, Eric. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 415 Blue Hill Ave. I need a date. Uh, Mr. Fortune, the date? We have right. Madam Chair, Mr. Lacasta, last case, I made a mistake. It, it's 7 12, July 12th at 11 30. Okay, will somebody from the office please get in touch with Mr. Lacasse with yep. the revised date? And in the meantime, let's. This date, this date would be for June 21st at 11 30. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals for the 1030 cases? If you give me the address, please. 15 Blue Hill Avenue. Thank you. For the record, calling DOA 130 415 to 417 Blue Hill Avenue. Name and address for the record, please. Brian Keith, 105 Mount Pleasant Ave, Boston. Uh, is there a reason for the request? Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. We have a more current set of plans that are not with the commissioners okay. at this time. We'd okay. like to ensure the commissioners have an ample opportunity to review. Thank you. May I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to defer. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The date, please? That will also be a date of June 21st at 1130. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals for the 1030 cases only? Hearing none, I'll go back to the 930 cases. Following case BOA 129 41 Williams Avenue. This is renovation to change auction from a two family to a four family and a small addition above the structure for an additional bedroom on the third floor. 
the violation of Article 9, Section 2, the non-conforming use change, Article 69, Section 23. This is in the Neighborhood Design Overlay District. Article 69, Section 9, the building has accessory stories. Article 69, Section 9, usable open spaces is insufficient. Article 69, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Eileen Rosa from Rosa Design and Construction. Um, on behalf of the owner, uh, Miguel Sanchez, um, our proposal here is to, uh, to do some uh, interior renovation with a small uh, 16 by 16 addition on the third floor uh, to change the occupancy from uh, two family dwelling for, uh, to four units. Uh, the current conditions uh, on unit one, uh, it's on the first floor with uh, two bathrooms, one bath, uh, 1,534 1, square feet. Unit two on the second floor and uh, third floor uh, with 2,233 square feet, three bedrooms and one bath. What's being proposed is uh, four units uh, with unit 1A at the front uh, first floor, two bedrooms, two baths. Uh, 971 square feet. At the rear, we have unit 1B with two bathrooms, two baths. Um, and then unit two on the second floor, two bathrooms, two baths, uh, three baths. Um, and unit three on the third floor with three bedrooms, uh, two bathrooms. Um, the site is, uh, it's big enough to provide uh, parking at the rear um, by extending the existing driveway. So um, let, me, let me just understand, are you still proposing to go from two to a four family? Correct. Um, and the zoning district is 1F6000. How large is the lot area? The lot, uh, it's 10,750 square feet. Okay. Okay. And tell us about how the parking would work. Yeah, so there's, uh, as you can see in this plan uh, on the left side, the, exis the existing schematic site plan, there's uh, the existing driveway on the left side. Uh, the intention, uh, right now there's plenty of uh, space at the rear uh, where we are proposing to extend the existing driveway towards the back to provide uh, six parking spots. Uh, at the same time, maintaining uh, a green belt uh, uh, all around the parking area, uh, providing more green space at, uh, specifically at the rear of the, of the lot. And tell us about the general character of the street. If this is a one family, 6,000, and this is currently a two family, what's the general number types of buildings on the street? Yeah, well, so there's, uh, yeah, there's currently a couple of developments going on in the street. Uh, there's actually one in the uh, right in front of uh, 41 Williams Ave, uh, where they are erecting a two-family uh, dwelling. And more to, uh, towards uh, down the street and, and up in the hill, uh, there is, it's, a, it's basically um, all mixed with uh, single families, two family, and even three family dwellings throughout. So, so this is a proposal to go to four families then? Correct. Uh, keeping in mind that we are maintaining the existing building uh, footprint and perimeter. Okay. Um, how are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Um, the plans are good. There, there is uh, no living space uh, per se proposed in the basement. There is a connection to, I think it's unit one with storage. Um, it is a, a, a sort of a rambling house. It is consistent in some ways in size to the uh, butters, but uh, you know I do I guess have a general question about four units here. But um, I will uh, we can take discussion from the board in terms of the use. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support or in opposition of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. This is Danielle Fonseca with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The applicants completed the community process and they notified all the butters and I hosted the community meeting that was held on March 2nd. They also reached out to the Fairmount Hill Neighborhood Association by email and they were informed that the group did not want to meet with the applicants due to several of their board members being participants in the development of the High Park Zoning Code. 
and they do not support this proposal based on the violations and the variances they are seeking. Uh, we, do, we did receive 13 signatures of support for this project, and at this time, we would like to defer to the board for judgment. Thank you. Madam I, Chair, uh, we do have those letters as well. We do have those. Hey, Madam Chair, I have no raised hand. Madam Chair, I do have a question about how the parking is. Is the parking for the spaces in the back already existing? Or are you, it looks like there's a fair amount of trees behind this building. Are they cutting down all the trees to provide that for that parking? Uh, no, the, the trees are, uh, the purpose is to uh, keep them and save them. Uh, um, the good luck is that they, they are basically by the uh, property line throughout. So as you can see, we're proposing a green belt. Uh, so we won't interfere with the existing trees. The, the, issue, the issue, however, is that this triggers an insufficient insufficiency in open space on the site. And with the side yard violation, it does in, impact side yard and height, impact any abutters, um, impact any abutters, privacy, et cetera. So, okay, so let's see, let's get a motion on the table here. Um, I'd make a motion to approve a BPD design review with special attention to the parking layout and, um, and, and look at the number of parking spaces to see if, if they could be re reduced and, and have additional open space. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'm going to vote in opposition because I do think that this is um, too dense um, for one family zoning district and um, it's already um, has a higher and better use, which is a two family. Um, so that's what my opposition is based on. Uh, however, motion has carried with those provisos. Calling the next case, calling DOA 129-6351-9 Littledale Street. This is directly one family on an existing residential lot. The violation of Article 67, Section 9, the lot width is insufficient. Article 67, Section 9, the front yard is insufficient. Article 67, Section 9, side yard is insufficient. And Article 67, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning once again, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Matt Eckel with Grego and Toscano with the business address of 11 Beacon Street on behalf of the applicant and homeowner, Christopher Gray, who was also on the call with us today. Uh, as mentioned, this proposal is to erect a new single family home. Uh, the existing structure on the property is also a single family home. However, it's been uh, heavily damaged and is beyond salvage in a, uh, in a recent house fire. Um, so we're seeking to essentially rebuild uh, along the same um, uh, outline of the existing structure. However, we're, we're filling in a few areas as well to make this home more functional as the previous home was, was an older build. Uh, the zoning subdistrict itself is a 1F6000. In terms of the floor plans, we're proposing unfinished basement space and laundry and mechanicals in the basement. Uh, one bedroom, one and a half baths, living space, and a front and rear porch on the first level. And so Matt, um, Councillor, can you tell us, so the applicant would have been able to build completely as of right because of the fire. Can you tell us what specifically it is that makes this different, very specific? Absolutely, Madam Chair. The biggest difference is currently on the back right portion of the existing structure. Uh, it juts out a little bit to the right. Um, so we're essentially filling that in to provide some more uh, living space on the on, on all levels, really. Uh, we are matching the rear and left side setback, and we are not violating the right setback, but the right side is where we're kind of infilling a little bit uh, to provide more adequate living space and, and uh, accommodating hallways and things of that nature. And that was a previous violation prior to the fire? Uh, the right side, Madam Chair, is actually not in violation. Uh, it's only okay. the left side. It it's violated, okay. but that we are matching the existing footprint as well as the rear guard. Okay. How are the plans, uh, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans look good. I think the design is consistent with the, the other houses on the street. Uh, no questions on them. Any questions from the board? 
Is anybody here to speak either in support or opposition of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair. My name is Uju Nochi, and I'm the Rosendo liaison for this meeting. Um, we hosted an abundance meeting on April 26 for this project. My office has received six letters of support, and they did contact the Neighborhood Association, Dale Streets. Um, they had no opposition for this and didn't require a presentation from the property owners. Good morning, Madam Chair. Oh, sorry, Eugene. Go ahead. No, yeah. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Jordan Frias here from Councilor Royal's office. We'd like to go on record in support of this. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary here. We do have those letters that the mayor's office spoke of. And Madam Chair, I have no additional reasons. We have a motion, please. Uh, I'll make a motion to uh, approve. Is it with design review? It's new construction? Um, sure, with design review. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Calling the last case for 930, calling VOA 103 4332, 36 to 38 Hitchborn Street. This erects a five story residential building with 24 units over parking on combined lots formerly known as 34, 36, and 38 Hitchborn, and a restaurant. The violation of Article 51, Section 56, off street parking. Article 51, Section 19, the use is forbidden of multifamily residential use. And is a forbidden use. Article 51, Section 20, the floor area ratio is excessive. Article 51, Section 20, maximum height is excessive. Article 51, Section 20, the re required usable open space is insufficient. Article 51, Section 20, front yard is insufficient. Article 51, Section 20, rear yard is insufficient. Article 51, Section 56, off street loading is insufficient. And Article 51, Section 56, off street parking is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney John Fulgini with the business address at 10 Forbes Road. Uh, with me this morning is uh, Peter Vanko, who's the team architect. <clears throat> so by way of context, this proposal of Butts New Balance Campus is approximately a six minute walk to Boston Land and Trans uh, Train Station. It is located on the corner of Hitchborn Street and New Balance Way. As Mr. Fortune stated, the proposal is to build a five story, bu story building with 24 residential units, one commercial space of 800 square feet on the first floor, eight off street parking spaces, 29 bike spaces with an 1800 square foot roof deck. Um, I'm gonna address the violations, Madam Chair, if that's okay. Um, we have an FAR, allowed FAR is a two, we're at 4.72. Parking is two spaces per dwelling unit, we are at eight total. Height is 45, we are at 59. Open space, we've removed the violation to the addition of the roof deck. Front yard is five, we're at zero. Rear yard is 12, we're at zero, but we were complying with the complete streets guidelines uh, through BPDA design review. Uh, unit sizes, uh, we have studios. Um, uh, they are uh, average size studios, 463 square feet. One bedroom, 610 square feet. And two bedrooms are 750 square feet. Uh, as far as process, it went through a two and a half year Article 80 process, which, as you may imagine, was interrupted by the COVID <clears throat> pandemic. And it was finally approved on the, by the BPDA on February 10th, 2020. As part of this proposal, there will be three affordable units, 70% AMI. Those units will encompass all the makeup of the uh, different uh, unit sizes. There will be one studio, one one bed, one two bed. Additionally, there'll be a cash contribution. In addition to that, there'll be another $15,000 contribution to the Boston Parks, plus Blue Bikes memberships to, uh, will be provided to all residents. Uh, Madam Chair, you know this area very well. Uh, it's located in the Guest Street Study, uh, which allows higher, uh, greater height and density around the Turnpike Core. And this proposal is consistent with that study, which calls for 60 feet to 110 feet in height. Um, and also, uh, we'll be adding, a, uh, with New Balance, adding a new road, which will be helpful to traffic flow in both New Balance, the neighborhood, as well as a uh, nearby stop and shop. Um, both Peter Vanko and myself are here to answer any questions that you all may have. Madam Chair, you're muted. 
Sorry, uh, can you tell us about the, the roof deck, please? Um, sure. Uh, Peter, could you want to opine as to um, the roof deck? Certainly, yes. Uh, Madam Chair, member of the board, thank you. Um, Peter Vanco here, Vanco City Architects, 407 Dudley Street. Uh, we are providing roughly 1,800 square feet of open space via a shared common roof deck, which has elevator access and two stairwells that come up with uh, two means of egress coming off of them. It has yet to be programmed from um, the standpoint of if there will be any types of amenity up there, but as of now, it's, it's just strictly 1,800 square feet has been um, budgeted for that open space. A couple of other questions. Are there any other amenity spaces in the building? And tell us about um, the commercial space. And I guess the question is, do you need a commercial space there? So the BPDA really pushed on that, Madam Chair. Uh, they thought it was really important that we would have a commercial space on the first level. Um, as I stated, it's basically on the New Balance campus where this building is located. And they felt that you know that would activate the street. Um, similar size buildings all around it, as you know, that area has changed, um, which was designed to change. Um, that was something they felt was important for street activation. Okay. And uh, any other common space within the building? Outside of the roof deck, um, there is a resident space, I believe, on the first floor, Peter. Um, um, there is uh, no common space. We're out of um, compact living, so we don't have any common spaces except for the roof deck. And we do have a generous lobby for the size of the, uh, of the units and type of building. We definitely have a generous lobby, the intention being that um, residents will gather there. We do have common space in the sense of um, a, a, bi a bicycle room, shared bicycle room that is, of course, um, being provided as a component of the transportation approval here. Um, so yes, I, I guess to answer in summary, yes, we do have some shared spaces on the first floor. And is this anticipated to be rental or um, purchase a condo? It is rental, Madam Chair. It's rental. And have you given any consideration to three beds? You know, it's it's the, the lot size itself is uh, pretty tight as far as doing that. We did meet with uh, Council of Reading and we had that discussion with her. Uh, she asked the same question. Um, it, it was just because of the, the size of the building, it just uh, wasn't functional in order to do that. Okay. How are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are fine. Uh, can you just, uh, I, I don't see a, a commercial space called out on this plan, and this is the plan I'm looking at. Can you just, I'm not sure if I'm missing, um, I see a residential lobby tenant space, bike room, trash. Can you just explain to me the difference of the ground floor plan? So Sorry, how are I you accommodating the rep, those, those uh, if there's a Mr. commercial space? Uh, Mr. Robinson, I believe the um, that may be mislabeled as the tenant space is the uh, commercial space on the first floor. Ah, gotcha. Okay, so the rest remain intact. So it's quite a small commercial space, 800. I believe, eight, uh, I think approximately 800 square feet, yes. Okay, gotcha. Okay, I understand. Uh, no other questions um, on the proposal. Um, I think it fits within the context that is now this area. Um, any other, Thank you. Any questions? Any questions from the board? I, I think yeah. I heard there's one studio, one one bed, and one two bed IDP units. Uh, what's the affordability target for those units? Uh, so, uh, 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 Ms. Pinato, those will be uh, seventy percent AMI. Oh, that's great. The, uh, 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 Ms. Puccini, was there any discussion with uh, the community about uh, rental versus for sale? I know there's a lot of concern about uh, churn and, um, you know, in, in that part of Alston Brighton and, and just tra transients. So wondering whether there was any opportunity for for sale. Yeah, we, um, that's a good question, uh, Mr. Ehrlich. We um, presented to the abutters as well as the BAIA, which the BAIA supported it as a rental uh, proposal. I do understand that in much of Austin Brighton, there's a tremendous pressure because of exactly what you're stating, transient people um, and, and the, the glut of apartments. Um, this area, because of where it's located, there's um, a lot of rental units around it, and there is some condominium units mi mixed in there as well. But um, despite that, the, we did uh, gain the support of the Brighton Austin Improvement Association, which the abutters attended in support of this proposal. Madam Chair, you're muted. 
I'm sorry, there's a lot of street noise out there, so um, it's very distracting. So, um, okay, I'll just let it go. Any other questions from the board? Uh, Mr. D'Amico, you have your ha hand raised? Oh, we cannot hear you. Bob, can you unmute? Ms. Ambassador, can you help uh, Mr. D'Amico? Uh, Mr. D'Amico. Oh, well, he is unmuted. He, he, uh, now oh, we can't hear you, Richard. There you go. Oh, now you, you, we, we still can't hear you. You came in and came out. Okay. Well, Mr. D'Amico, um, um, you know, f we, while we figure that out in the meantime, <laughs> Madam Chair, I can speak for Mr. D'Amico. I have his comments here. Okay. <laughs> okay right. Go ahead. Uh, hold on two seconds here. Uh, regarding 3638 Hitchborn, the parking plan for this project regarding the number of spaces as well as the access and egress are very unclear. BTD would like to request a parking plan that resolves these issues. Okay. Let's uh, thank you. Um, in the meantime, can we go and see if anybody's here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer judgment to the board. Uh, some background information on the project. They went through a UPA-led small project review community process. Uh, they also went to the Brighton Alston Improvement Association and received their support. Uh, they've worked closely with city agencies as well as New Balance on um, continuing that roadway that is currently uh, stopped. Um, and I know many residents were excited to see that happen and hopefully alleviate traffic in the area. Thank you. That was on the call. I know her hand was up earlier. Um, Annabelle, I'm your panelist. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Madam Chair, members of the board, Annabelle Gomes, zoning chair for the Brighton Alston Improvement Association. Uh, the BIA voted to support this project. Uh, I was also on the guest street study, and the study uh, is consistent with the height of the building for the area, and the proponent did work to uh, make the street uh, connection from guest street uh, to North Beacon on there, so uh, we're very much in support of this. This uh, does help uh, really make the street connections and everything, and it also consistent with the height. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have no additional reason. May I have a motion, please? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve with BPDA design review and uh, BPD, BTD parking review. Excellent. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Mr. Fortune, can we do the 1130 deferrals, 1130 recommendations, and then we'll take a 10 minute break? Sure, Madam Chair, absolutely. Uh, I'm going to call the 11:30 rediscussions. Are there anybody? Is there anybody deferring or withdrawing their 11:30 rediscussion? If you could give me the address first, please. Mr. Mr. Secretary, uh, yes. 166. Yes. For the record, calling VOA 125 2505 166 to 168 Salem Street. Name and address for the record, please. Good uh, morning. Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Derek Small, business adjuster for Dr. Blue. Um, we are seeking uh, a deferral for the address 166, 168 Salem Street. May I have a motion, please? Motion I'll to make defer. a motion to defer. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. The date. Mr. Secretary, if we could have a quick turnaround as quick as possible, that would be greatly appreciated. We can. We have one date open on uh, May 24th at 1130. Don't let us down, Mr. Mr. Small. Just make sure that you're completely ready for that date then. Will do, Madam Chair. Thank you so much. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals for the 1130 rediscussion? If you give me the address first, please. Hearing none, I'll go to the recommendations. This was the recommendations that were heard at 1010 Mass Ave. 
Case BLA 128-3840-102 High Street was installed a 12 by 12 roof deck. It was approved with BPDA relief for the roof deck only. Case BLA 128-3294, 47 to 48 Snow Hill Street was deferred to 616-22 at 5 p.m. for the community process. Case BOA 129-9297, 149 H Street was denied without prejudice. Article, uh, case BOA 126, 1647, 15 Meehan Street was deferred to 6, um, 6, 7, 22 at 11.30 a.m. <clears throat> Case BOA 1287825 14 Victoria Street was, a, was an extending existing dormer to an exterior wall and stairway. The second and third floor was approved with BPDA. Case BOA 1288317 69 Richview Street was a remodeled kitchen, first bath, bathroom in addition, was approved. Case BOA 129-5401 19 to 21 Chevrolet Road was denied. Case BOA 1301293609 Adams Street was to remove an existing one story, a 7 by 22 addition, including brick, stone. It was approved with BPDA. <coughs> Case BOA 1245010 1224 Morton Street <coughs> was to move the kitchen to the right side of the home and extend the front wide. It was approved with BPDA and no building code relief. <coughs> Excuse me. Case BOA 1289733, 38 Wellesley Park. It was increased living space and renovation of finished space on the third floor. It was approved with BPDA. Case BOA 1258032, Webster Street. was denied without prejudice. Case BOA 1282898, 80 Portra Street. was a renovation of the first unit conversion and single family to a two family residence. It was approved with BPDA and attention to the spiral stairway and size of the dormer and exterior materials. Case BOA 128-8989, 160 Austin Street, was to add a second floor addition to the home. Cantilever, it was approved with BPDA, to show the plot plan, filed with ISD. Case BOA 128-3265, 26 Hawthorne Street, Hawthorne Street was denied. Case BOA 128-1381, 99 to 101A Franklin Street, was the roof advisor for this owner and occupant it was approved. And the rediscussion, case BOA 1289454, 4 Cherokee Street was deferred to 6722 at 11.30 and then up to, for an updated refusal letter. That concludes the subcommittee's meeting on 1010 Mass Ave. Motion to concur with the recommendation of the subcommittee. There are second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Um, they carry, um, the board is, uh, will adjourn until, um, time. Recording stopped.
Good afternoon. The Board of Appeal is back in session. I'm going to take a quick roll call. Mr. Fortune? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Ruggiero? Hello. Hello, Mr. Ehrlich? Here. Ms. Dong? Present. Mr. Robinson? Good afternoon. Uh, Ms. Panato? Oh. Good afternoon. Uh, Mr. Hampton? Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Good afternoon, Mr. D'Amico. Can uh, you let us know when Bob's on, please? Um, Mr. Fortune, why don't we go ahead? Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm going to call the 1030 hearings, call the first case, calling VOA 130 1189, 121 Salem Street. This is to uh, change of occupancy, include an ice cream shop, takeout use. No work to be done. The violation of Article 54, Section 12, use is conditional. Name and address for the record, please. Hey, this is uh, Stephen Pasig and Tilly um, representing Sandy Russo at, um, regarding 121 Salem Street in the North End. I believe Ms. Russo is on, uh, on the call as well. Um, she is in the process of opening up a, um, an ice cream shop in the North End on Salem Street. Um, and she is seeking zoning relief to change the occupancy to include ice cream shop with takeout. Um, current occupancy is 15 residential units, one commercial so, space, so, and retail candy shop. So, so excuse me, Emma Pascantelli, can you tell us what the current use of this particular space is and if the applicant has experience with takeout? You got no problem. Currently, it is um, used as a candy store. Um, that was its prior use. Um, prior to that, it was a tailor shop. Um, Ms. Russo does have uh, extensive history uh, in the business community locally. She previously owned uh, Lulu Sweet Shop, which started at 227 Hanover Street and uh, most recently was uh, located at 28 Parmenta Street. Um, gonna miss that candy store. Excuse okay. me? Okay, we're gonna miss that candy store. Um, how are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Plans are good. Uh, no questions. It looks straightforward. Um, any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support or in opposition of this proposal? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Uh, the applicant went through a ONS-led community process and a butters meeting was held February 24th. Uh, they also uh, received a letter of uh, no objection from the North End Waterfront Residents Association, uh, which was held on March 22nd. And then from the North End Waterfront Neighborhood Council, uh, they attended a meeting on March 14th and the members voted in to, to support the proposal. Uh, with that, we defer to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary, okay, Secretary. Secretary. I'm trying to have no raised hands. Uh, actually, I have one uh, question. Please. Sorry, Madam Chair. One question is Eric. Um, th there, are there grates currently shown on this the facade, and will those be removed um, as part of this change? I believe there are grates, but I believe they're going to be removed. Um, okay. I, I'm not 100% sure. I can get you that answer, though, very shortly. That's, that's okay. Design review will take care of it. Yep. Hopefully. Thank you. Yeah, so... Um, uh, Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Uh, members of the board, my name is Nina Virginia from the Council of the Edwards Office. So, if Boston would like to go on the record and support. Thank you. Ms. Ambassador, anybody else? No, I have no additional raised hands. Motion, please. Make a motion to approve a BPDA design review um, for the grades and the usual takeout proviso language. And this petition only? Petition only, yep. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> motion carries. Thank Call you. Your next case calling DOA 130 3634 755 Boyles Street. This is outdoor seating, sidewalk plan, five tables, 14 seats. Violations Article 9, Section 1, Extension of a Non-Conforming Use. Name and address for the record, please. Um, Marcy Casa, McDermott, Quilty & Miller, 28 State Street. Uh, joined with me today is also Adam Karachi, the Senior Property Development Manager of Raising Canes. 
Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, we are here before you today um, seeking the addition of 14 outdoor seats to the space located at 755 Boylston Street. Um, in this B690A zoning district, the restaurant use is conditional. However, in December of 1978, um, the Board of Appeals um, allowed for the restaurant use at this location um, without a proviso that it was limited to that uh, applicant only. The previous operator at the location had a patio of 12 seats. And um, we're here before you today seeking to have 14 seats on the uh, 164 square foot patio. Uh, this would not be, um, and have an adverse effect on the Back Bay community. It's an appropriate location and it would, will not cause any serious hazards to the vehicle, pedestrians, um, or create a nuisance in the neighborhood. What's the name of the restaurant? Raising Canes. Uh, it's a chicken finger uh, chain uh, restaurant. Okay. Um, okay, and the previous use was 12 seats, was that yes. what you said? So you're increasing, requesting an increase from uh, two seats? Yes. Okay. Um, how are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Plans are fine and the increase in seats doesn't appear to cause any issue with egress or anything of that nature, so no, no questions. Okay, uh, any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Molly Griffin with the Mayor's Office Neighborhood Services. At this time, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Uh, there was an ONS abutters meeting held on March 8th. No concerns were raised by any neighbors who attended, and the applicant did meet with the Neighborhood Association of the Back Bay who gave their stance of non-opposition as well. Thank you. Madam Chair, Madam Chair, I have no raised hands. May I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. You're all set for that. <clears throat> Thank you. Oh. Have a good day. You too. Calling the next case, calling POA 1280 5 Magnolia Place. This is to convert a single family dwelling, a three story, two story, to a three story to a two family dwelling and replace the existing foundation and expand house footprint as shown. The violations, Article 10, Section 1, the limitation of off-street parking area, Article 50, Section 29, the usable open space is insufficient. Article 50, Section 20, the lot area is insufficient. Article 50, Section 43, off-street parking requirement. Article 50, Section 29, the lot area is insufficient. Article 50, Section 29, the floor to air ratio is, is excessive and Article 50, Section 20 in the side yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair and the board. Uh, my name is Akash Lala, homeowner of Five Magnolia Place. Uh, I'd like to propose um, uh, to convert my single family home to, to, to two units um, and with um. the roof deck. That, that, that's not the, uh, yes, that's um, not my file. I'm trying to uh, look. Well, it, it, it is part of my file, but that's not the important part. I don't, I don't know if the plans are there. Okay, here we go. So, so please tell us what's being proposed and tell us which, which page we should look at specifically to understand what's being proposed. Okay, uh, on that first page is the plot plan, and what we're seeing on the left is the existing uh, house footprint, and on the right is the um, is the proposed footprint. And the, the main addition to the the footprint is um, the a twenty four by twenty four section towards the back of the house, um, and that, as far as footprint goes, that that's the main main change. That's, that's a huge addition. Um, can you tell us what, so, so you have, let's just, let me just get the, mm -hmm. have um, a lot of violations. Tell us what the breakdown is of the unit size. How, how, what will the proposed size be of unit one and then unit two? Um, <clears throat> I, the, oh uh, well, unit one will just be the the entire first floor, 
and then unit two will be the second floor and third floor. And so and you, unit, unit two is owner occupied, that, that will essentially be my unit. So tell us about the square footage then of each of unit one and unit two. Um, so the, I, I, cannot, I cannot read these prints well enough to be able to tell. Uh, so the the first floor is a, a thousand square feet. Um, is that what you're looking for? Yep. Okay. So the first floor is one thousand uh, five square feet. Uh, second floor is one thousand forty square feet, and then third floor one thousand seven seven. And there's no occupancy in the basement. No, no occupancy. Okay, and um, tell us about how the parking is proposed to be um, to 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 work. Um, so I, I I'm limited on space, so I I'm proposing uh, tandem parking to to satisfy the two space requirement, um, one per unit, and essentially, you know, the I live on a dead end road, which is. Uh, uh, and also I have a small lot um, and uh, you know there is it, it, on the road it's a, it's a quiet road there's no traffic um, or, or, or anything uh, so you know the, the, it is reasonable to assume like we may park on the, the side of the, the house uh, you know for a few hours here and there and uh, work out the tandem parking situation. Okay, and tell us about that roof deck. Um, <clears throat> so it's a, uh, it has a head house, um, and it's going, it, it will, uh, you know, from the, the top of the house, uh, from the top of the deck to the, it will go up five point, five feet, two inches. Um, and it's only accessible by the, uh, homeowner, me. Um, yeah. And what's the dimension of that um, roof deck? Uh, it, it, it'll span the the whole um, house. Okay. The whole top. Okay. Um, have you seen the BPDA recommendation? No, I haven't. Okay. Um, I'll I'll read it to you that it, they recommend a denial without prejudice. They can, that, that you should consider the ex excessive S FAR floor area ratio and insufficient lot area in the rear yard. Um, so um, just for your information, uh, from a planning perspective, um, that's where they're coming from, is uh, the rear yard, um, the, the, your impact on your rear neighbor um, and the, the huge, the, the, the size of the, the building. How are the plans, Mr. Rob, Mr. Robinson? Uh, uh, you know, unfortunately, I think the plans are, are, the BPA picked up a lot of the issue. I, I have even an issue with, so there's actually a third floor addition that's the entire length of the building as well. There is the 24 by 24 in the back, but they're also proposing a full third floor um, that I just think is, is just, it's too excessive. It's just, it's just uh, it is well, consistent. So let me just say, Mr. Mr. Robinson, in oh. addition to on uh, drawing A-0, it says, you know, it's kind of confusing because they say they're going to convert it, but yep. on A-0, it says they're demolishing the yep. existing building. So. They're creating these issues by themselves by creating by demolishing the existing structure. Yeah. So, so Mr. Lala, uh, you understand what the concerns are. So I think you have two choices: um, either to defer, or we can play it through. Um, but you've heard what our concerns are. Um, so it's really up to you what you want to do today. I did not know about the, the denial. So, um, so, no, and that, that is fine. So, okay. um, so those are your options. If you defer, you can come back with revised plans, have a conversation with the BPDA to figure out how you can have less of a neighborhood impact. Okay? 
So, uh, 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 let's okay. Check. Okay, okay, so, so, so BPA. BPA. Okay, so what is your, your, your decision to go ahead or to request a deferral? Um, I'll, I'll request a deferral. Okay, may I have I'll a, make a motion? I'll make a motion for a deferral. I'll second, Eric. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The date, please. We have a date of July 12th at 1130. Okay, thank you. See you then. <clears throat> Calling the next two cases. On the case BOA 129-5593, 30 Clarkson Street. There's a companion case, BOA 129-5590, 38 Clarkson Street. This is for 30 to erect a two-family dwelling on a vacant lot. This is a DND project, the violation of Article 65, Section 42, conformity with an existing building alignment. Article 65, Section 9, the lot width is insufficient. Article 65, Section 9, lot frontage is insufficient. And Article 65, Section 9, the building height excessive the number of stories. Uh, Madam Chair, for 38 Clarkson Street, it is the same purpose and it is the same violation. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Matt Echo with Drago and Toscano with the business address of 11 Beacon Street. Uh, also joining me are Dwayne Boyce and Adler Bernardin from Norfolk Design and Construction, as well as Chris Drew from 686 Architects. Uh, as mentioned, we are seeking to erect uh, two separate two-family homes, one at 30 Clarkson Street and one at 38 Clarkson Street. Both of these properties are currently vacant. Uh, these projects are part of the Neighborhood Homes Initiative in collaboration with the Mayor's Office of Housing. Uh, the zoning district for these properties is a 3F5000. And again, we are proposing two families at both parcels. Uh, in terms of the violations, as Mr. Secretary read into the record, they are both identical violations. Uh, they are both cited with conformity with existing building alignment. However, we are proposing a 15 foot setback, which meets the front yard requirement. Uh, both lot width and frontage are required 50 feet. We have 45 at both parcels. And building height in stories allowed is two and a half. We are at three, uh, which is consistent uh, with this part of Clarkson Street. Uh, as for the units themselves, uh, again, both buildings will be two family units. So the first floor will house unit one, it's an 825 square foot, two bed, one bath with a deck. And then unit two will be located on the second and third floor for a total of approximately 1,500 square feet, uh, three total bedrooms, and uh, two bathrooms with both front and rear decks. Uh, with that, I'll pause and take any questions or comments from the board. Um, yeah, you can't help it that the, the, the lot is um, insufficient and the frontage and the width, et cetera. But can you tell us about the existing building alignment? Sure, Madam Chair. So I think if you actually look at, uh, I'm not sure if there's a picture included on this presentation, I don't believe there is, but on, on, on Google or other mediums like that, um, we are fairly consistent with the street. Uh, we are proposing a 15 foot setback. I believe we were cited for this only because there wasn't a formal uh, site plan turned in for the whole street showing up uh, existing building alignment. And parking is in the rear or tandem? That's correct. Both parcels have two parking spaces at the rear, accessed by the driveway, which you can see there on the screen. Okay. How are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are good. Uh, no questions. I, I do think building alignment could be reviewed during a BPA design review just to make sure it's a modal. I, it looks like probably will be more right. sufficient. So. Um, I, I think I forgot to ask. How does uh, do you have a rendering? Um, so um, rendering just the uh, elevations. It's uh, kind of a triple decker style, uh, which I believe is at the end of the presentation. If you'd like to see the elevations. Okay. In the meantime, any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support or in opposition of this proposal? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Denise DeSantos from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The applicant has met with the community a few different times and has met with the association a few different times to kind of meet the community's needs around affordability and what they wanted to see within this neighborhood. And they have support from Director Butters as well as the association. Um, that letter of support might have gone to you guys later. So I don't know if it's on file, it was sent over today. 
Um, at this time, our office would like to defer anything to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe McEachern, City Council, Frank Baker's office, would like to go in support of the applicant. And Madam Chair, I have no raised hands. May I have a motion, please? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve with BPA design review, uh, specifically looking at building alignment and exterior design. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Call the next case, calling DOA 1280120, 76 Brent Street. This is a build a third floor and ground floor addition to an existing one family, extend living space into the basement area and change occupant from a one family on the record to a three family dwelling, construct the third floor addition and renovate the entire dwelling. The violation of Article 55, Section 65-41, off street parking is insufficient. Article 65, Section 9, insufficient side yard. Article 65, Section 9, insufficient open space. Article 65, Section 9, the number of allowed stories has been exceeded. Article 65, Section 9, excessive FAR. Article 65, Section 9, insufficient rear yard. Name and address for the record, please. Oh, hi, my name is Eloisa Centeno. I'm the owner of 76 Grand Street in Dorchester. Um, Please, are, are you on two phones? Are you on two lines? Yeah, just mute it. You may want to mute one of them if you're on two, because there's a very bad echo. You may want to mute one of the um, systems you're on. Okay. My my name is Eloisa Santeno. Um, good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair and the members of the board. Uh, I'm Eloisa Santeno. I live at 76 Grand Street and uh, for 29 years. And uh, I would like to stay in my house uh, for years to come. Uh, I'm aging. And uh, with the rising of cost in Boston, I would like to uh, make my um, living, um, my, to converse my residence in uh, a three residence uh, unit. And so to give me the affordability to stay in, in my home that I've been for a long time. I'm okay. convenient can to I, locate can I just, five can minutes I, um, to can, um, can I, a, a bus stop and five minutes to a T T station. <laughs> Mr. And uh, I have the support of the abutters and okay. many of my neighbors. And uh... thank you, uh, Mr. Silva. Can you stop for a minute? I have a few questions for you because it looks like that what we have in front of us is an application for a subdivision of the plans, and it looks like. And, and, and what we have before us is only one address. We do not have uh, both addresses because it looks like this is a two family, 5,000 zoning district, and you have about 7,000 square feet. And so usually when there is a proposal for a subdivision and a construction, we look at it together. So we make sure that the existing house isn't in some way too compromised so that you know down the road they cannot do anything with it okay um so if you can respond to that um that would be helpful yeah. uh, uh, uh hello yes uh, go ahead. this is uh caesar de Silva, the architect for uh the centeno family uh the uh lot uh, that we got here was subdivided to one lot now, uh, which I know we are in the uh, 2F 5,000. And right now, the total together, we have close to 4,000 square feet. So it, hold on, Mr. Silva, when was it subdivided? Because always subdivisions come before this board. Uh, I think it was uh, subdivided, uh, excuse me, last year. I'm not sure, it was the annex, the land that belonged to her. She uh, 
got a portion of the land for the neighbor that we needed for extension. I didn't know we needed to go over the board, please. Um, direct me here where, I'm, where I don't have the uh, knowledge at this Yes, yeah. Uh, so this, is, is this a subdivision or did you initially own what is on this map as lot B and then did she purchase lot C? Uh, no, she owns lot A. And oh, sorry, not A. Okay. This lot C. I the piece of land, the little uh, mm -hmm. 191 square feet only. Okay, so we're looking, so basically we're looking at lot A and lot C, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's where the proposal is to change the occupancy from a one to a three family, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Now, Mr. De Silva, you've been before this board many times. Mm -hmm. um, can you quickly describe to us how this is proposed to occur? And I know, Ms. De Silva, you, you, you have not had the experience with us. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to um, have Mr. De Silva respond to that. And also, if you can talk to us about basement living, because this board has not been keen on basement space or occupancy for a very long time, okay? Okay, uh, we are, uh, the situation here is that uh, her family has moved, grown and the kids left. She has a lot of square footage in the basement and then the attic. So the, we will follow the life and safety and the construction code that we will have the windows in the area ways and she has enough height in the basement to uh, have uh, above ground the unit enough light for the basement for the ground floor so if you see the plans the plans has whatever the bedroom has that's the window wells and the access uh for uh, emergency access uh to the basement uh and the attic is she wants to uh on the attic, take the roof and add uh, oh, the floor. Mr. Silva, Mr. De Silva, can you tell us what page we should be looking at for the roof, Thank for the third you. floor? Uh, okay, go keep going down. This is the existing condition. Go here is the basement now. This is the ground floor. You see, the ground floor has two bedrooms. In each bedroom is, if you see, spacious of eleven feet by 11 feet in another, excuse me, I can't read it so well here because, mm -hmm. but if you bear with me, I got another plan. Bedroom okay. number one is 12 by 10. Okay. Bedroom number two is 12, seven by 12, nine. So then we have a great room, which is kitchen and living, uh, which is 21 by 18. Okay, so let's go, let's go to the other units then. Let's go to the attic, the top unit, the, the, the proposed third unit. Yeah, keep going down, ma'am. Okay. Uh, let's, uh, this is the proposed unit uh, on the top floor. We have, uh, again, the, um, excuse me here. Uh, the front bedroom is 11, 8 by 12, 5. The rear bedroom is 11 by 11 by 10, 11, let's say almost 11 by 11. So we have again a great room, a family room of 12 by 10, some, and a kitchen of 8 by 9. And we have two means of egress. We have a closet with a laundry and a bathroom. Okay, thank and you. Two. Okay, thank you. Um, now how are the plans, Mr. Robinson? I'm just going to toss all the detailed questions to you and Mr. Ehrlich, please. Thank you. Um, I, you know, I think uh, um, it is a it is a, a basement unit. Um, unfortunately, how we uh, typically don't uh, agree. It does have the window well shown. However, there does seem to be plenty of height. However, it is basically subterranean. Um, I don't have an issue necessarily uh, with the third floor addition. I mean, it, it, it would be it seems to be the only flat roof in the whole area. Um, all the other houses are pitched roof. Um, so I'm not sure if, uh, if maybe a two family is, is, is more uh, consistent with the community and, and a, than a pitched roofed approach, but I, I guess I can leave that up to the discussion of the board. 
there are more units there with flat roofs in the street. Many few, like on the corner, there, is, there are a few. Okay. Any other any other questions from the board? Are there, are there any elevations uh, in these plans? Yes. yes. Go back. What? Follow. Go down. Yeah. Go. Keep going. Okay. Okay. So that shows that the basement is pretty much underground. It, there's a the the last page, I believe, or sorry, second to last, A12, shows a section. The basement is approximately eight and a half feet below grade, or that's what it's dimensioned, right there on the left-hand side. Yeah. Um, there are sort of 3D renderings on the last page, if you want to roll to that page, Madam Ambassador. Um, so you sort of see the sort of the context, but yeah, basically the, the basement is below. Yeah, uh, we would try to follow with the city, the ADU, uh, smooth up, but because we were changing, we were not, uh, we thought the city is encouraging additional dwelling units in the basement. That's how uh, she came to me with the concept of doing ADU, but we couldn't follow because we were changing the shape of the roof. Okay, uh, hold on, hold on, Mr. De Silva. <clears throat> how is parking supposed to work on, on the site? There is three parking space, three cars on the left side. If you go back to the site plan, Mm -hmm. All the way to the beginning. Mm -hmm. And is, is that where the window wells are for one of those bedrooms? Yeah, we have a, a space there of the garden that uh, there is a uh, five, six feet still on the side with grass, I think, or where the windows are. But if you see on the left side, all the way to the garage or to the shed, yeah. to the shed. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Denise DeSantos from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The applicant did meet, <coughs> excuse me, they did meet with the abutters back in February and as well as the association back in February. There was a few concerns around just the neighborhood being a 2F neighborhood, but the um, neighborhood association sided with the applicant in support because there are a few three deckers in this neighborhood now as well. Um, and she's been a part of this neighborhood for a long time and is so they did want to see this occur. So they do have support from some direct abutters as well as the association. At this time, our office would like to defer any judgment to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary, we have one letter of opposition. You, Madam Chair, I have no raised hands. Okay, um, so let's just look at this. Um, may I have a motion, please? We've done this before where we have approved, the, the applicant may ask for more than what we approve for. Um, so may I have a motion, please? Well, um, I mean, I don't know if the applicant's prepared to accept this, but I would make a motion for approval with the elimination of the basement as living space. Is there a second? As, as living space completely? Or How just about as bedroom? Separate yeah. unit, yeah. Yeah, I was thinking the same. I don't, can't see a layout for that with the, moving the bedrooms upstairs, but. So, so the motion is to eliminate uh, basement bedrooms. Is there a second? Well, is, is that, that what Mr. Ehrlich, Mr. Ehrlich said living in the basement. I just want to clarify I mean, that. I, mean, I, did, I did. The whole thing is, is virtually okay. completely underground, but it's, Got it. so, so I'll we, second, I'll second that motion from Mr. Ehrlich. So can I clarify, is the motion to change it to a two bedroom? I mean, a two family? Yes. And should we be clear about that approving it for a two instead of a three family? Yes. Yes, so approval for a two family, is that what it is? Yes. Mr. Ehrlich, okay. Is there a second for that? I'll second that, Eric. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Approval for a two family without basement occupancy. Oh, okay. Would there be a design review on that too? Uh, yes, sorry, very good. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, Mr. Yep. Rudy, yeah. 
So it's approval with VPDA design review for a two family with no basement dwelling. Okay. Uh, good luck, Mr. Silva and, and, and the applicant. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair and members of the board. Until next. Thank you. Call the next case, calling DOA 130 5785 77 Bailey Street. This is to new three story, nine unit multifamily dwelling, proposed 12 off street parking spaces at grade level, an underbuilding footprint in rear of the property, a nine foot privacy fence along the, the rear lot line and portions of the side lot line. Violation of Article 65, Section 41, off street parking requirement. Article 65, Section 8, the MFR is used as forbidden. Article 65, Section 42.2, conforming to an existing building alignment. Article 65, Section 9, the fluid air ratio is excessive. Article 65, Section 9, the building height is excessive in stories. Article 65, Section 9, the side yards is insufficient. Article 65, Section 9, the rear yards is insufficient. Name and address, I'm sorry, side yards is insufficient for nine foot fence. Article 65, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient for a nine foot fence. And Article 65, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Brendan Wilbur. I'm the applicant, uh, 110 K Street in South Boston, uh, for an address. Um, and this proposal is to raise an existing three family uh, and erect a three story, nine unit building with 12 parking spaces. And that's one of those nine units I agreed to dedicate to an IDP unit. Um, the unit count is six two bed units, three three bed units, all ranging from approximately 900 to 1200 square feet. Uh, there's open air parking behind. Mr. And Mr. Wilbur, have yes. you seen the BPDA's recommendation? Uh, I am not familiar. I do not know where I would have been notified. Our, our, our city's um, planning agency has recommended denial without prejudice because of a number of reasons. One, insufficient open space. Um, you are too, the proposal is too far into the rear and side yard, and it's and it's um, it, it's an excessive flow area ratio. Okay, and then you should reduce parking. There's, there's, there's a number of issues. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, we can go ahead. We'll have the BPDA go on record, but just so that you know that that's hanging out there. So do you want to go ahead? So why don't you go ahead and tell us what you're proposing to do? Yeah, just a quick question. So you're saying BPDA. Are you saying that's separate from the refusal letter from ISD? There's comments. And then where would that have... Um, come to me in an email or a letter because I'm new to the BPDA comments before ZBA. Is this your first project? Have you done other projects at the Board of Appeal? Yes. Yes, a decent amount. A decent amount of projects. Um, mm -hmm. Well, we always um, receive recommendations from the Boston Planning and Development Agency. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you know, these are a lot of violations. It looks like you cover a lot of the lot. Mm -hmm. um, and also we've we've gotten a fair number of, or a number, some some letters um, from, to the board. So I think I'm feeling in a generous mood today and ask whether you want to defer your project and kind of work through some of the issues that have been identified or if you want us to go ahead and review the project in its totality today. Um, can you explain, so what happens if I refer to go through and, it, and it's denied? What, what is the process after that? I think you might need to wait a year before you can come back to us if it's purely denied. If it's denied without prejudice, you can come back earlier, but with another proposal. Um, and, you know, so, you know, you need to make a decision whether you'd want to just defer it and see us at a later date or have it work through our conversation today. Um, I guess I would just like to go through with the conversation today and, and cover the cover the items. Okay, so go ahead, give go ahead with your presentation. Um it's six two bed units, three three bed units, they're all range from nine hundred to 1,200 square feet. There's open parking 
behind and under the building. Um, there's no basement, so it's you know proposes conventional slab on grade. Um, these are for home ownership condos. That's why I went for two and three beds um, and a building that meets the parking requirement. There'll be nine storage units in the main lobby, um, bicycle parking on site. Um, some units have in-unit decks. Um, there's no roof decks. And um, I have uh, 24 letters of support that I uh, We'll hear all about and, all of that, but since you have the floor, give us more details. Yep. Can you walk through the violations? What is the zoning district on this? Because it does tell us that this is a forbidden use. Sure. Yeah, it's a 2F5000. Um, so obviously, nine units is in, in violation of that. And tell us what the 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 what what these the rest of the street looks like because if it's if the zoning says five two two families and you're coming in with nine, um, you know that is something we need to take into consideration. Sure. Yeah. So directly surrounding, it's it's mostly three family uh, three story, flat roof, classic triple deckers. Um, on the direct abutting the rear lot is 1943 dot Ave, which is I believe that's six stories, um, with 64 units, and then recently 69 and 6963 Bailey um, was approved. It's that lot's about double the size for 19 units, and I believe that's four stories. I'm I'm actually not sure I'm not sure on that one. Um, okay. So that's kind of how we came to this this building, just looking at. Things that have been approved directly next door and mixed with yeah. what's in and there. Tell us, tell us how you you have side yard insufficiencies. Sounds like you are too close to your neighbors. Um, so can you tell us what's required and what are you proposing? Yep. So for side yard, what's required is ten. We have six three, which is matching the existing side setback for the existing property. Mm -hmm. And then on the right, the other side, we have 12 and a half because that's where our 10 foot driveway plus ample room on the other side of the driveway will be running along that side of the lot. Okay, and then tell us about that nine foot fence. We, we, we don't usually pro, uh, approve nine feet fences. Yeah, so that was kind of just an aesthetic move. Um, just. But, and if you see that juts up to nine feet about halfway down the lot so the, the front of the lot has the shorter fence and then we decided to jut that up to nine feet in the back just because that's where the, the parking area will be so from a privacy visibility standpoint we did that um you know but if that's something that you know we have this has to be a design review discussion um you know that's open to that okay um so let's see, um, Mr. Robinson, how are the plans? Uh, the, the plans are fine in terms of what they're, they're uh, depicting. I, I, I will tend to agree with the BPDA. I think it's just too large, um, although I appreciate the two and three bedroom units, uh, home ownership. I think the, it's just too much lot coverage along with the 12 parking spaces, which is, um, very close to a local T station. I, I just think there's too much density going on the site. And I'm thinking about general density in terms of the site plan and the, uh, the building plan. Um, so uh, I, I don't have any other uh, questions, but I, I just feel like it's, it's I'm in consistent with the BPA on this in terms of its density on this site, particularly. Okay, uh, any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, um, speaking on behalf of George who ran the community process. Um, our office hosted a butters meetings for the proposal in January and February of 2022. A uh, few abutters expressed interest in the building as a historical landmark, while other abutters believed that the uh, proposal would be an improvement upon the neighborhood especially given the voluntary voluntary inclusion of an IDP unit. Our office received 24 letters of support. Um, and with this, we'd like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. 
Madam Chair, Secretary here, we do have support letters and opposition letters. Um, I see that Bob's hand is raised. Bob, did you want to weigh in on this? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Okay, I'd like to, uh, Bob D'Amico, BTD, um, Madam Chair and members of the board, I'd like to see a reduction in the number of parking spaces to nine to imp uh, improve maneuverability and also allow for more screening and buffering. Some of the raised hands. Um, yeah. Orlando, sorry, I'll start with you. I'm going to send a request to unmute yourself. Uh, once unmuted, can you state your name and address for the record, please? Uh, Orlando DePass, 84 Barry Street, Dorchester, Mass. Go ahead. Uh, uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair and, and members of the board. Um, I live directly across the street uh, from this property. Um, hasn't been uh, very well maintained over the years. And um, I agree that um, if this uh, development were to go across the street from my home, it, it would be a great addition to the neighborhood. It's a beautiful neighborhood. And a lot of the homes in the area, you know, in this area have nice homes either in front of them or next one beside them. It would just overall be a great addition to the, to the neighborhood here in my opinion. Um, there's been some issues here um, over the past couple of years. I'm not going to speak to that, but I think something there rather than... Sorry, rather than, sorry sir. Sorry, sir. Do you say there were issues at this particular parcel at 77 Bailey? Just, just um, yeah, issues, issues with um, just it being in, inviting to um, uh, criminal elements uh, around on right. and around the property. Thank you. That's all. We we just um, I think something being done with it rather than nothing would be a great addition to the neighborhood. Okay, and then um, Ronald, you've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? Ronald Jeff. Yes. Brooks. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, I'm I'm in a butter directly across the street. Um, um, even though my my property goes from Ashmont Street to Bailey Street. I've been here for 16 years, and I and my husband have, have been fighting to try to preserve uh, that section of Bailey Street because uh, the current uh, building that's there has deteriorated quite a bit in the last uh, 16 years, and it has been used for drug dealings and all sorts of crazy stuff. Inspectional services even had the occupants moved out, so it's unoccupied right now. Um, it's in a row, at the end of a row, of triple-deckers that take up most of the lots. So I understand that in, in regards of maybe a, a neighborhood that has only uh, you know single family and two and, and two family homes that this might be inappropriate, but it's a half a block from the Ashmont T. And as I said, there are triple deckers right next to this location that um, take up the entire lot. So my husband and I are very much in favor of this development, and it's been a it's been kind of a difficult process so far, as you can see, it's had several butters meetings but I would hope that people would give it consideration. Thank you. And William Canty? Uh, yes, I'm William Canty, um, better known as Chip Canty. I'm also, I'm the immediate abutter to the west of this property. I'm, I noticed Brenda did, did not mention my house in describing the, uh, the uh, surrounding lines of Victorian, uh, three family Victorian immediately next door. Um, as a homeowner, I understand wanting to do what, whatever you can with your property. And I, you know, as a neighbor to Orlando and, and Ronald and others who have witnessed some of the problems we've had with criminal elements on the street, and and uh, which have been there have been there were a couple of tenants of the of this building until recently who were too too friendly, shall we say, with the uh, problem elements on the street. Um, however, one of the bigger issues for the community as a whole has been the spate of development proposals where people want to come in and tear down uh, existing housing and cram apartments and condos uh, as, put as, as much as they can on the lot. I very much agree with the BP, 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 BPDA's recommendation that this is far too large for the lot. I think there are better ways to deal with uh, problem tenants than to raise a building. Um, I also want to, you know, there, 
it's barely been mentioned here that there is an active petition that the Landmarks Commission did accept to consider historical status for this building. It's a 200-year-old building. There aren't many of those left in the area. Old buildings don't always, they're not always pretty, and I'm not sure that this one can be preserved. It doesn't, it's been compromised over the years. I lived next to it for 40 years and did not know its history, did not even recognize that it used to be a center entrance colonial facing onto Dodd Ave. I don't know whether it can be saved or not, but it seems premature for the developer to be given permission to raise the building while there's still a pending petition before the Landmarks Commission. So for those reasons, and as I said, the fact that it's just too large for the law, I would ask that the petition be denied with prejudice or deferred. Thank you, Mr. Hoffman. Thank you. I have no additional raised hands at the moment. Okay. Mr. Bobo, do you have anything to say in response? So as you can see, there's been a lot of discussion with the abutters. For the parking that was mentioned, 12 is what is required by zoning, which is why we did that, to meet the parking requirement. And it was brought up, less parking, and ultimately it seemed that more people than not wanted the more parking option. As far as the historic stuff, that has definitely been a very hot topic. There was a petition filed by someone, and there is a lot of opposition to that, I guess. No, but I guess, have you filed with the Article 85 demo delay? So I have not been, started that process yet. I'm used to that. Okay, so. After the data being a part of it, so I haven't been engaged by Article 85. Okay, so it sounds like there are a lot of issues that you haven't applied for demo delay. In the meantime, you know, we are asked to comment on a proposed development. Jeff, do you want to just go on the record? I mean, I know I tried to summarize what the BPDS said, but do you want to go on the record? Yeah, I don't want to repeat what a lot of people on this hearing have already stated. Jeff Hampton, Boston Planning and Development Agency. I mean, it's just too big. It's, you know, taking a three-family, knocking it down. A three-family that's already non-conforming because it's a two-family district, and now you're creating a nine-family. So we're on record denial without prejudice. It's just way too big. Not saying that something shouldn't go there. Nine units is not appropriate. Thank you. Okay, may I have a motion, please? Motion to deny without prejudice. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Good luck. Calling the next case, calling DOA 711-945-19, Regina Road. This is a driveway of curb cut, proposing two parking spaces. Violation of Article 9, Section 1, extension of the non-conforming use. Article 10, Section 1, the limitation of area of accessory uses. And Article 65, Section 9, dimensional regulations, open space is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Mr. Ambassador, should we just move to the next case then? Sorry, I do see a hand raised here. One second. Is it? No, that's the clock. I believe he's on, Jess. The name just might be different, but maybe the person with their hand raised. That's not him. No, I just had a question for the board. No, no, no. Why don't you just have a call into the mayor's, to the Board of Appeal office? Okay. Let's just see. Would it be under? Yeah, it's under Mr. Ambassador's name. Okay. Thank you. 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 Ok
a different name than the, um, any, you know, know any other name related to this case, Denise? Um, in the meantime, why don't we call uh, Arlington Street, please, uh, Mr. Fortune? I will, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I'm looking at some of the correspondence. It looks like this project was back in 2017, and they were trying to get in touch with this gentleman, but it didn't seem like he was getting back in touch with them. So we'll see if it comes back at the end. Okay, cool. Uh, for the, calling the next case, calling BOA 130 6240 26 Arlington Street. This to confirm actually is a single family building and changed to a three family residential building with three parking spaces in addition to the rear of the structure. The violations Article 51, Section 56, off street parking and loading. Article 51, Section 8, the use is forbidden. Article 51, Section 9, the lot area is insufficient. Article 51, Section 9, the Florida area, area ratio is excessive. Article 51, Section 9, the building has excessive in stories. Article 51, Section 9, the building height is excessive in feet. Article 51, Section 9, the front yard is insufficient. Article 51, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. And Article 51, I'm the fuck Section on right 9, now. Like, I'm off. the rear yard I'm is insufficient. Off. Name like, and I for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney John Fulgini with the business address at 10 Forbes Road on behalf of the applicant. Uh, with me uh, this afternoon is Eric Zacherson, who is the architect, together with Jake Simmons, who's representing the developer. As uh, Mr. Fortune said, uh, this proposal to construct a new three-family uh, with three off-street parking space, not a new three-family, in addition to an existing house, to change the use to a uh, three-family with three off-street parking spaces, uh, this change will be done uh, through a rare addition. Um, I will address the violations. Parking um, under the code, two per unit. We're pro proposing one per unit um, use. Uh, we have a three-family and a two-family zoning subdistrict. Um, lot area is 5,000. We're at 4,777 square feet. FAR 0.6 is allowed. We're 0.96. Height is two and a half stories, 35 feet. We have 30. Uh, we have three stories, 35 feet two inches front yard is 20 we are at six foot eight that is existing we're not touching the front of the house side yard is 10 we are at two feet 10 inches which again which is existing and rear yard we removed the violation so we we're at 30 feet the unit sizes madam chair our unit one is a three bed two bath 1074 square feet unit two is a three bed two bath that is also 1074 square feet and unit three is a three bed, two bath, 1,148 square feet. As part of the proposal, there are no roof decks and the basement is for uh, utilities only. Tell us how the parking is proposed to work. Sure, uh, Eric, are you on the line? I, I am. Uh, if you go back to the site, uh, the, the proposed plan there, you can see that it's Tell us the page, please, so we can just be efficient about this. You say the parking is on the left of the building as you look at the building, um, and there is um, two spaces in the back and one space on the side. If you go to the second page, there's a, uh, there you go, that's the site plan. Okay. And that's upside down, Madam Chair. So Arlington Street's at the top of that page. Top of the page, sure. Got it. Okay. Uh, Mr. D'Amico, any, any opinion on this? No, Madam Chair, lady, uh, it works. Okay. Then, uh, um, Councillor, can you talk about the rear addition? What's the dimension of that rear addition? Um, Eric, do you want to speak to that? He's muted. Sorry, I don't have it offhand. I believe it is 12 feet long, but um, it's marked, it should be marked on the plan after this one. So basically, it's changing its style from a, um, you know, from a pitched two-family, uh, pitched 
uh, double story to the equivalent of a three story. Is that what I'm understanding? No, we're, we're planning to keep the front of the building uh, in intact so that it still has the some of that pitched uh, uh, expression. Okay. Yes, the building, uh, Madam Chair, the building in the front will not change. It's just the rear addition that will change. Okay, so what is the dimension of that rear addition? Uh, of course, my computer is dying. Die, die in the middle of this call. It's about, uh, I'm going to guess because it's not quite, it's about 20 feet. Uh, it looks like there's 14 for the bedroom, four feet, and I see a dashed line that I think is the existing house, um, approximately, but so 18 plus walls, I think it's 20 feet toward the back. Yeah, okay. uh, I'm, I'm getting 21 feet. Yeah, okay. There you go. So, and then, but let me just confirm, but the rear yard is um, conforming, is that correct? 30 That's feet. Correct. Okay, yes, I just yes. want to make sure I understood that. Yep, okay. Okay, uh, so how are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, uh, plans are fine. The the layouts look fine. There's no space shown in the basement, and as Mr. D'Amico said, the parking does appear to work. So, um, no questions. Yep. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here in support of this proposal? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Bonner Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Uh, at this time, I'd like to defer judgment to the board. Uh, the applicant went through an ONS led community process and a butters meeting was held June 2nd, 2021. Uh, we did not hear any concerns from Director Butters. Uh, they also went on to the Brighton Alston Improvement Association uh, both times after they were initially denied by this board and received their support. Thank you. Good afternoon. This is Maura McCray from Councillor Breeden's office. The Councillor would like to go on record support of this project. Thank you. Uh, members of the board, Annabelle Gomes from the Brighton Austin Improvement Association uh, would like to go on record in support. I have no raised hands. We have a motion, please. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve with BPA design review. Is there a second? second? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too. I'm going to call um, a case we called earlier, Madam Chair. Case BOA 7119451519, Regina Road. Is 19 Regina Road on? May I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, it's now 102. I'm going to make a motion for denial without prejudice. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. We we'll call the 1130 cases, calling BOA 1270458, 525 East Broadway. This is a change of art from a two family to a three family, renovate the interior and add 11 foot by seven and a half foot, two story infill of 165 square foot, and add a roof deck on the first of the, on the roof of the first floor, rear addition accessible from the second floor unit, and creating four parking spaces in the rear yard. Violations Article 68, Section 29, Roof Structure Restriction. Article 68, Section 33, Off Street Parking and Loading. Article 68, Section 8, Usable Open Space is insufficient. Article 68, Section 8, Side Yard is insufficient. And Article 68, Section 8, the additional lot area is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Mark Lacasse, Lacasse Law, 75 Arlington Street in Boston attorney for the Albanian Orthodox Archdiocese in America, which is the owner of this property at uh, 525 East Broadway, next door to the St. George um, Cathedral, which is also owned by um, the Archdiocese. So, Councillor, um, please tell us, to explain to us what's happened and tell us why you were deferred the last time. Um, we were deferred the last time. Uh, it was advertised for the, the hearing and we were still working with the rear of butter regarding okay. some issues related to water runoff at the cathedral and those have been resolved. Okay, so please uh, go ahead, tell us the, the, the sizes of each unit and tell us how parking is going to be proposed to be accommodated. Yes, so um, as I said, this existing uh, structure is owned by the cathedral if we could stop at this slide that's a great rendering of it nope 
Sorry, keep yeah, scrolling. So, the one with the so Council, it's late in the day for us. We so, still have projects ahead of us. So please get directly to um, to tell us exactly how this this will be subdivided, how the units are going to be created. Yep. So, Madam Chair, the um, existing use has been uh, a rental as an entire building, and the church is proposing to convert it into three two-bedroom units, one on each floor. Uh, the first floor unit would be 1,590 square feet, and the second and third floor units would be 1,375 square feet each. Um, the deck that's shown here that you're seeing on that little out wing in the back, that, that is being removed and we will accept a proviso for no roof deck. That was part of the agreement with the rear abutter, so no, no deck is proposed. Showing here on the side of the building is the little uh, infill, the two-story infill that creates a second bathroom for each of the units on the first floor and the second floor. Um, there are four parking spaces shown on the site plan behind the building accessed by a driveway between the cathedral and this building. And behind that, there are six spaces that are used by cathedral staff um, as shown on the site plan. So there are four parking spaces for the three units and the infill is a, a total of 165 square feet. Otherwise, the building remains as, as shown and they're going to put significant effort into restoring and preserving this very important uh, historic structure adjacent to the cathedral and it's is it a, it's on a separate lot and so the um, four parking spaces will be completely on this lot but access to the additional six spaces is there an easement or anything that's allowed um, we're going to do the church will essentially do a cross easement with itself because it owns both structures but to ensure that that driveway is always accessible to the three units, which will actually be rental units still owned by the church, but we're going to do a cross easement so that the driveway is accessed by each of the parcels and each of the parcels will have access to the four spaces for the residential and the six spaces for the cathedral. Got it. Mr. Robinson, how are the plans? Uh, plans are good, no questions. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office and Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer judgment to the board. Uh, we are aware of uh, some concerns regarding the increase in density um, and just concerns around parking. Um, that's fairly typical for South Boston. Thank you. Madam Chair, I do have a raised hand. I'm sorry, I'll start with, is it John? Sent a request to unmute you. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? Hi, John, are you looking to give testimony on this proposal? I believe that's Mr. Yetman, who's our uh, direct abutter that we worked out the agreement with. Okay. Oh, oh there you go. Go yes. Ahead, mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. Yes, uh, good morning, Madam Chair, uh, members of the board. My name is John Yetman. I reside at 538 East 4th Street, South Boston. I also own a property uh, at 542, both properties which are in direct um, abutment to the proposed project at 525. Um, I am in, a, in favor of the project. I think it's going to be a good addition to the neighborhood. The Albanian Church, uh, through their attorney, um, Mark has done a, a great job in, in working with all the um, all the issues that we had, and they've, sent, they've since been resolved. And uh, we we look forward to a better tenancy coming along with the three units, because there were, there were some history that I won't get into. But I'm uh, I'm, I'm happy uh, what they proposed. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Jessica. Can I? Of course. Go on. Good afternoon, Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Ana Calderon from Council President Flynn's office. The councilor would like to go on record in support based on feedback from neighbors and the Gate of Heaven Neighborhood Association and a true community process with good faith compromises on both sides from the neighbors and development team 
which, re which resulted in the removal of decks and addressing other quality of life concerns. Thank you. Okay, and I have no additional raised hands, Madam. May I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve. Um, the plans do still show the rear roof deck, but I without uh, the approval of the roof deck, I guess, or the removal. Approval with no roof deck. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. You're all set. Good luck. Thank you so much. Calling the next case, calling BOA 115-3857, 127 Bolton Street. This is a combined vacant parcel, 127 Bolton and a vacant parcel, 152 West 3rd. Subdivide to create a new 127 Bolton Street parcel containing 1,110 square feet. Then erect a one family dwelling with two car garage spaces at the ground level. The violation of Article 68, Section 33, must be parking and loading. Article 68, Section 33, but Article 68, Section 33, Austria parking access and maneuvering area. Article 68, Section 8, insufficient lot size. Article 68, Section 8, dimensional regulation, insufficient additional lot area dwelling for a thousand square foot unit. Article 68, Section 8, excessive FAR. Article 68, Section 8, insufficient rear yard setback. Article 68, Section 8, insufficient usable open space. And Article 68, Section 8, insufficient side yard setback. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, Mr. Fortune, the next case is a companion case if you wish to read that into the record as well. My name is George Moranti. I'm an attorney with a business address at 350 West Broadway. Okay, yeah, sorry about that, Mr. Uh, Moranti. Calling the next case, uh, with the companion case, BOA 115-3868-152 West 3rd Street. This was to combine, it's the same purpose as the 127 Bolton Street. I believe the violations are the same, just let me double check it. Uh, the violations are the same. So, name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is George Moranzi. I'm an attorney with a business address at 350. Mr. Moranzi, Mr. Moranzi, yes. not coming through very clearly. You're crackling up. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me uh, switch headphones. I apologize. Give me one moment, if, uh, if you would. Is this better, Madam Chair? Yes, please go ahead. Thank you. Um, these are companion cases of two vacant lots connected in the rear, uh, one fronting on West 3rd Street and the other on Bolton Street. Um, first, as a housekeeping matter, I do wish to point out that uh, each application's description of work references a combination and subdivision of the lots. Uh, there will be no combination and subdivision that is from the very initial proposal over a year and a half ago when the buildings were connected. Each lot will remain as is. Uh, additionally, the proposal of Bolton Street is now a single family dwelling rather than a two family dwelling. The updated plan sets uh, reviewed and approved by ISD on April 7th reflect these facts and there's no effect on the zoning or the refusal letters but for the elimination of the usable open space violation for Bolton Street. I also wish to point out as an initial matter that neither of these lots exists as required parking for any other project, parcel, or use. Okay, so a uh, counselor on Bolton Street, since it's a one family, the violation for additional dwelling unit is removed. Um, and is the um, violation for lot size also removed? No. No, the violation for lot size uh, uh, remains. Okay. I'll begin with 127 Bolton since uh, the chair did question that. Uh, with respect to the proposal for 127 Bolton, what's being proposed is a single family home with a two car garage located uh, between several connected row houses to the left and three connected townhouses to the right. The lot size is typical for both developed and undeveloped lots in the area. Uh, all of the lots in this line are approximately the same size. It would be a three-level, four-bedroom home of 2,256 square feet 
with a private roof deck uh, accessed by hatch. Uh, the relief is needed for the lot size, uh, the FAR, which here is 2.64, two is allowed under Article 68, and uh, side and rear yard setbacks. The rear setback here is five feet, uh, which in combination with the setback for 152 West Third allows for 15 feet of separation distance between the rear walls of both buildings. Uh, there's an access and maneuverability violation cited, but I point out that both garage parking spaces are eight and a half feet by 20 feet. Garage access here would be provided by means of an existing curb cut. With, I'm sorry. Uh, hold on, hold on one minute. Um, mm -hmm. Can you go tell us which page we should look at? Is this a two and a half story or a three story building? What's the zoning district? The, the zoning district is MFR multifamily residential. Uh, okay. Each building is a four story building, ground floor parking with three units of living space above. Okay, got it. Yeah, what's being shown on the screen now, Madam Chair, is 127 Bolton Street. Uh, that is actually, I think, second in the list of plans. I, I was prepared to begin with 152 West 3rd Street. Um, with respect to 152 West 3rd Street, a very similar looking, nearly identical looking building. What's being proposed is a new two family dwelling on a vacant lot of 1,380 square feet. Unit one would be a bi level three bedroom unit of approximately 1,447 square feet. Unit two would be a bi-level two-bedroom unit of approximately 1,505 square feet. It'd be a two-car garage with, again, regulation size spaces accessed, again, by an existing curb cut. As to the zoning violations for West 3rd Street, the lot size here is 1,380 square feet, whereas 2,000 square feet is required. Again, this is a typical lot size for both developed and undeveloped lots in the area. The FAR here would be 2.24 with the maximum under zoning again, 2.0. Three parking spaces would be required with two units, while two would be provided in the garage. The parking area there is 20 feet, 10 inches wide, uh, so there's easily room to accommodate the two vehicles. There would be a roof deck with hatch access for the use of unit two only, but not unit one, which results in the usable open space violation. There's a side yard setback violation as the lot is only 21 feet wide. Finally, there's an 11 foot rear yard setback, whereas the code requires 15 foot setback with the application of the shallow lot exception. Okay. Um, and those code cuts are existing on both lots? That's correct. Okay. Um, okay. How are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, the plans are good. There's uh, no questions on the proposal. Um, I think the height is is consistent um, with the streets that there are fours and threes and twos. So it, it sort of fits within the context, I think, uh, from a planning standpoint. So no questions from me on that. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Uh, this went through an extensive community process where the applicant worked closely with a number of neighbors and was able to secure support for many. Um, however, there's still a few abutters who remain in opposition due to concerns with height and density. Uh, with that, we, we defer to the board's judgment. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Obisha. Members of the board, Anna Calderon from Council President Flink's office. The councilor would like to call record in opposition based on feedback from many neighbors regarding the size and density of the project, as well as quality of life issues raised during the community process, along with the need for additional public process. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, on behalf of City Council at Large, Michael Flaherty. Uh, the council is unable to go on record of support due to the uh, violations under Article 68 for which a, uh, a lengthy community process uh, went through in drafting, uh, but does acknowledge that there are certain projects that fall under Article 68 uh, with merit, that do have merit. Thank you. I have quite a few hands raised here. Um, I'll start unmuting folks. Um, Direct to Butters, please uh, have your hands raised so we can hear from you first. 
Um, uh, Greg? Go ahead. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? Hi, Madam sure. Chairman Hector Jessica. This is Greg Simakonis. I am the direct abutting neighbor at 154 West 3rd Street. And um, we have been um, in direct opposition to this project from the onset when Neil had uh, recommended to build um, the direct um, you know, units spanning from block to block. Um, we're definitely against the, the, the height, density, and rear and side, back, uh, side yard setbacks. Um, we just recently had a massive assessment, you know, um, for painting our units, and it's going to be impossible to paint our units with his 0.5 foot um, setback. As I've said to Neil numerous times, we would support the project if he, you know, had something a bit more reasonable, you know, single families on each, you know, if he agreed to the side and rear setbacks. He's just asking to build too much on too small a property. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. And I have um, 617-686. Carla, can you hear us? Hi. Yep, go ahead. Can yes. you state your name and the record, please? Paul O'Brien, 150 West 3rd Street. Uh, I'm the director of butter uh, to the West 6th Street side. Um, his setback is incredibly unreasonable. We've dealt with this in the neighborhood, uh, trying to come up with some appeasement. He has basically shut down everything. I think he's being very aggressive with it. His setback is going to drastically have a negative impact on the value of my property. My property is undeveloped, so it's really going to limit what I can do with my property in the future with that type of encroachment. Um, I'm not willing to, nor should I suffer a loss for his gain. Also, the number of parking spaces he has, he is going to be using these units as rentals. And in South Boston, we all know one bedroom equals one car. And the number of bedrooms he's proposing to build is very unreasonable, especially when you consider on the Bolton Street side, there is no parking. So any parking on Bolton Street that does not fit in the units will be on 3rd Street. There is no parking on Bolton Street. Thank you. Okay. Um, 617-638-8000. You're unmuted. Can you hear us? Yep. Go ahead. I think that's me. Yep. Okay. Um, so I'm Kim Walsh. I own 125 Bolton Street. I directly about 127 Bolton and 152 West Third is diagonally behind me. Um, I've been in Southie my whole life, born and raised. Um, both of these lots definitely need a facelift. Um, they're just empty lots. Um, Neil's gone above and beyond to accommodate the neighbors. He's bent over backwards attempting to satisfy every individual concern. And I just wanted to give my support for both projects. I think they'll be beneficial. Thank you. And Tristan, I sent a request to unmute you. Go ahead. So my name is Tristan Taylor. I live with my wife and two boys, Henry and Elliot, 11 and 8. Um, on 110 Bolton Street. I've lived on the street for 20 years. Uh, you know, definitely uh, similar to Kim in support of the project. You know, it'll definitely help out with the neighborhood. Having a single family on Bolton Street will hopefully bring other families to the area because we, we own a single family there as well. Uh, so definitely in support of the project um, and the, the uh, benefits that it brings to the, uh, to the street. Okay, there are no additional raised hands at the moment. Okay, um, given that information, um, and I'm wondering if it makes sense to split up the votes on these two properties. Um, uh, Ms. Ambassador, can you mute everybody, please? Um, and can, um, can we have a discussion? Okay, go ahead. Um, uh, what, do you th what do you guys think? <clears throat> They're both called into the record, so may I just have a motion on 127 Bolton Street? I'll make a motion to approve 127 Bolton Street with BPDA design review. Is there a second? Second. second all, those in, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. May I have a motion on 152 West 3rd Street? I'll make a motion to approve with BPDA design review, uh, 152 West 3rd Street. 
Is there I'll, a second? I'll second that motion. All, second. Those, in, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Good luck. Call the next case, calling BOA 122 4197 73 Stanwood Street. This is a change of art from a two family with daycare to a four family dwelling. Scope to, the scope to include renovation of an existing dwelling, adding a four story to the building, added the front decks and solar roof panels with the parking in the rear. The violation data 50, section 28. Use is conditional on 4F3 in a 3F zone. Article 50, Section 43, off street parking is insufficient. Article 50, Section 9, 29, additional lot area is insufficient. Article 50, Section 29, the floor area ratio is excessive. Article 50, Section 29, the building has excessive in stories. Article 50, Section 29, the building has excessive in feet. Article 50, Section 29, the use of open space is insufficient. Article 50, Section 29, the front yard is insufficient. In Article 50, Section 29, the side yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Good uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, Eileen Rosa from Rosa Design and Construction on behalf of the owner, Elizabeth Fernandez. Uh, so in our previous hearing, uh, where a uh, uh, deferral was requested uh, to, to a um, uh, concerns about the roof deck that we were proposing and uh, most important that um, the neighborhood association was not informed um, in regards to this application. So uh, this time we got the opportunity to present the project to the neighborhood association where we received their support. Uh, in this case, uh, we removed, uh, for uh, other people's concern, we removed the head houses and the roof decks uh, the, the common uh, area roof deck that we were proposing and uh, instead uh, we are proposing an accessible space for future solar panels. Um, we also modified the lower unit uh, and removed uh, one bedroom. So instead of three bedrooms, it will be a two bedroom, the unit uh, 1B. Any occupancy in the basement? There is a yeah, proposed unit 1B, uh, which is a walkout basement from the, uh, towards, uh, from the street. If you look at the rendering on the second page. So what's the, what's the floor to ceiling height? What's the floor to cell height? And if there are window wells, what do they open up to? Do they open up to parking areas or what do they open up to? conditions of the lot uh, it allow us to have a unit without window wells uh, we located the bedrooms towards the front where it's our uh, where we are at grade level uh, and the ceiling height there in this uh, basement is seven foot nine uh, feet uh, seven feet nine inches sorry <laughs> and you're still going from a two family with daycare to a straight four family no daycare correct okay how are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, the plans look good. Um, uh, thank you for the updates. I, I, I do see some more information as well on the lower level unit. Um, the, the grade does slope toward the front. So um, both those bedrooms are uh, sort of full height windows um, and the grade is sloping up toward the back and, and the common area in terms of kitchen and is pushed toward the back where there are some higher windows and there's a full walk out to the front uh, for that lower level unit. So um, I think the adjustments uh, are well understood and received. So um, thank you. No further questions about the proposal from me. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the board. This is Jay Song Gant from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We would like to defer this matter to the expertise of the board, but I do want to highlight that one, the applicant has been at the Stanwood Street, Oldsfield Road, and Columbia Road the Resident Association meeting that was held by Project Right on March 3rd, and they have been back to that meeting um, to once again gather more support. The association and Project Right have both written letters of support for this actual proposal. Those should be held by Secretary here. Um, 
And then I just want to highlight the project right has definitely one maintained a lot of communication with this applicant and has also requested that they come back to another meeting just to follow up after you know today's date, well today's decision, and then also um, just maintaining all sense of communication with the applicant in which they have been very forthcoming in doing. Thank you. I do have a few raised hands here. Um, I'll start with uh, Mike. Mike, I sent a request to unmute you. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? My name is Michael Kosu of Project Right, 320, letter A, Blue Hill Avenue. Uh, as Jason mentioned, uh, the applicant has come to several uh, neighborhood association meetings. Uh, they've received the support, especially given that they removed the roof deck. We look forward to working with this homeowner as we move forward. We also want to thank the board for your thoughtful comments to begin with that helped to uh, sh shape the redesign of this project. We look forward to working uh, forward with, with this homeowner. Thank you. B uh, BJ? I sent a request to unmute you. Okay, go ahead. Hello, my name is, oops, sorry. Hello, my name is BJ Oswagu. I'm a representative from the District 4 City Council's office. And today we're going to stand in support of the project at 73 Stanwood because it has received uh, men's uh, neighborhood support. Thank you. I have no additional raised hands. Thank you. May I have a motion, please? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve with uh, BPA design review. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. What we're going to do is um, it's 1.30. We're going to take a 10 minute break and we will uh, resume with the last case, which is the court remand. Recording stopped. Okay.
Um, our last case for the day, court remand. Um, Mr. Porton, can you please um, read it into the record? We'll do, Madam Chair. I want to make sure everybody's here. I think they are. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you for the reminder. Mr. Ruggiero? Uh, present. Mr. Ehrlich? Here. Ms. Dong? Present. Uh, Mr. Robinson? Here. And Ms. Bonato? Here. Uh, Mr. Hampton, are you on? I am here, Madam Chair. Thank you. And uh, Mr. D'Amico, you too? I'm here. Thank you. Okay, let's proceed. Uh, case BOA 1190262, court remand. This is 51 North Margin Street. For a remand hearing pursuant to the order of Superior Court, or shall we hear arguments and accept evidence and testimony from both the applicant and the members of the public and about as on the same violations addressed at the board's prior hearing on July 27th of 2021, pursuant to all conditions required by the remand order. <laughs> Article, Article 9, Section 9, not, Section 2, non-conforming use change of art. Article Section 32. Section 32.4, the groundwater overlay district, applicability. Article 54, Section 18, roof structure and building height restriction, reconfiguration of the existing roof profile, and the purpose was to build an additional four units in re filing for a refusal letter to go to ZBA. This was a change of occupancy from a private club on the second floor, on the first floor, to a six-story Four unit dwelling and constructing four additional stories over existing structure. Name and address for the record, please. Afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Stephen Miller, McDermott, Quilty, and Miller. I have next to me Anthony Pisani, the archi uh, architect, along with Bill Paquette, um, should be on as a panelist, um, an associate of uh, Mr. Pisani as the architect. So before we proceed into any great detail, I need a, a couple of questions answered. On the July 27, 2021 hearing, what was the uh, board's decision at that time? And um, do you have a sense of which board members sat that day? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, as of uh, the hearing on July 27th, was um, a unanimous decision. Uh, you sat, Madam Chair. Um, also, Mark Fortune, Mark Ehrlich, Joe Ruggiero, Ruggiero uh, Tyrone Kindle Jr., Hansi Better, Baraza, and Sherry Don were sat. And it was a unanimous decision. Okay, so um, uh, Haron sat. Tyrone Kindell and uh, I'm sorry, um, Hansi. Hansi, um, correct. Okay, and so the question is, uh, Mr. Robinson, um, have you had a chance to look at the plans? I have looked at the plans. Okay, okay. So everything is in order. Uh, let's proceed. Hey, Madam Chair, if I might, um, I did file a memorandum in support of the zoning code relief which uh, was acknowledged to receipt along with uh, the plans which have not changed from July 27th hearing and also copies of the shadow study um, for so the board. If you, would, if you would kindly start from the beginning and just tell us the story of this appeal. Okay, the, um, the uh, project site is 51 North Margin Street, the sites 2,717 square feet. It's located in Boston's North End Neighborhood Zoning District and in a multifamily residential zone subdistrict, as well as a groundwater conservation overlay district. Uh, and so, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt so crazy. Um, Christian, do you want to go on the record on this? Hi, Madam Chair. This is Tom. I don't believe uh, Christian Simonelli is on for this one. I see, some, I see somebody signed in as Christian. Do you? I don't know. Okay. Let me see. You're looking at the one that with the name just Christian? Yes. I think that was in the last case, Madam Chair. Oh, okay. Okay, sorry. Maybe. 
Maybe Madam not. Chair, it may be, so may be someone who... You are here, Christian? Yes, I am. Okay, please put your name and address on the record and tell us what the outcome of the uh, GCOD uh, reading is. Where do I find that? Oh, sorry. Excuse me, Madam Chair, it's the wrong Christian. Okay, got it. Okay, so let's, I'm sorry, let's proceed. So, Madam Chair, we did submit on the July 27th, and Christian uh, was there at that time. Uh, we submitted a letter from Boston Water and Sewer that we were in full compliance with the um, GCOD requirements uh, in, um, with uh, Section 5 of Article 32 of the Zoning Code. The, uh, the the requirements under that and and uh, Christian did testify at that point okay. uh, that that we had met all those requirements. Okay, so so thank you. The, at least that gets that administrative piece out of the way. Tell us what the proposal is, and and can you speak through what the violations are? What zoning district is this? Is an MFR zoning district? This is a. a Boston neighborhood zoning, it's a multifamily residential subdistrict as well as the groundwater con right. conservation overlay district. Um, the uh, building currently uh, is, uh, has two non-conforming uses in it. The building was constructed in 1940. There's two non-conforming uses uh, as a uh, parking garage and it's listed as a private club. It was most, most recently used as a uh, dog walker facility. Uh, the violation, um, it, building was built prior to the zoning code, but the existing uses that were listed are non-conforming uses. We are changing the uh, to a conforming use, uh, fully conforming use. So therefore, the uh, section of the zoning code files uh, has it as a violation as a conditional use. So um, that um, is an interesting way of looking at it, but we're going from non-conforming to conforming and therefore require a conditional use permit from the board. Uh, the, as we address the GCOD and the uh, final violation is the height and um, I'd like to address some of the others before I get to that and, and let uh, Bill Paquette uh, show the, uh, the plans on that and how we, how we came to the, the 65 foot height. But can I, can I address some okay. other issues prior to that, Madam Chair? Yeah, please go ahead. Um, so the, the uh, as I said, the uh, context of the project complies with the zoning code. Um, we're not seeking any variances. We comply with floor area ratio and it's an allowed use. Um, we do not require any zoning codes, uh, any variances as uh, ISD has done in their, in their refusal letter. The project, as we said, just merely requires the three conditional uses. Um, the, if I might, on to comply with uh, the conditional uses, uh, we should show that it will not, is appropriate for the location. We, we contend that it is appropriate since it's a multi-family multi residential uh, area and with, which is exactly what we're doing. Uh, it's an allowed use. So, um, Councilor, let's start here. Okay, so if I'm looking at this uh, page 4.1, the the garage space which appears to be on the right is proposed to stay how many spaces are being provided in there we're providing four spaces for four units so there's no violation on parking okay and then is there a ground floor retail use as i as we look directly at the building no, it's strictly strictly residential. It's for residential units, uh, one of which would be occupied. Um, well, they're condominium units, so they will be they will be home ownership. One of the um, 
occupants will be is the the, the applicant today. Okay, so it's in the building up that go, that is proposed to go up to sixty feet, sixty five feet in height. There will be four residential space condos, four parking spaces. Can you give us the breakdown uh, on the units and the sizes of the units? Bill, can you can you dive in here? Yes. Okay. Bill, back yet. He may be in the attendee section. Ma Ma Madam Chair, yes. if, if I just may, if I just may, I'm reading the remand letter from the board, right? Have you, did you see that? Yeah. It's only asking us to just explain the three reliefs we granted Mm -hmm. and then let the applicant talk. Uh, but I just want to make sure we have everything appropriate on the record because it's, I think, hard for people who haven't sat on this case before to jump right in. Okay, so let's just go um, and um, what, uh, you know what? give us the breakdown on the units, okay? Bill, have you? There, I believe I'm, I'm, uh, I'm unmuted now. Okay, Bill, you're all yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, well, the, the current drawing shows, uh, uh, it, it just shows this is the basement plan, which would be strictly mechanical in, in, in nature. If you'd like us to go through the, the floor plans. No, no, no. I, I don't need to go to the floor plans. Just tell us the breakdown of these four, four units. Okay. How many bedrooms, how many square feet? Yes, each, there are four units. Uh, each unit is a, a two-bedroom plus study uh, unit. Uh, the uh, the second floor unit is 1,300 square feet. Uh, units uh, uh, two and three are 1,400 square feet. And the topmost unit is a duplex unit that's uh, 1,740 square feet. Is there a proposed roof deck? Uh, each of the units have roof decks on the level of their units. Uh, and the top, the topmost floor is a partial floor. Uh, it counts as a floor, although one could describe it as a penthouse. And that has a deck uh, outside of it, uh, on a on a roof. So it's the receding, the receding building with the front deck on the front. Is that what it is? Uh, it's actually the the deck at the topmost level is off to the side okay. of the uh, the occupiable space. Okay. Okay. So I think we have all the basics on the record. Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? And I'm going to hear from three people, four people in support, and I'm going to hear four people in opposition. Okay. So, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. It's time the Mayor's Office like to defer judgment to the board. Um, this proposal went through a complete community process. Uh, the North End Waterfront Residents Association held a meeting July 8th, 2021. They voted to oppose this appeal. Uh, the North End Waterfront Neighborhood Council uh, held a meeting June 14th, 2021, and those members voted to support the proposal. Uh, with that, we defer to the board. Thank you. I'll start with Paul. Any other representatives of elected officials? Okay, then let's go now to the four uh, neighborhood people that we need to hear from. Okay, Paul, you can just go ahead. Can you state your name and address on the record? Yes. Oh, sure. uh, go ahead. Sorry. Go on. Go ahead, Paul. Okay. Uh, Paul DeMori, I'm uh, from Massimino's at 207 Endicott Street uh, in the North End. Uh, I've been in the North End since well, I was right a little next. boy. Oh, sorry. Raise your hands. Yeah. Yeah. Hello? I want to Hi. hear from four people in support, okay? And don't, please don't give me history. Just talk to me about um, your support and the reason for the support, okay? I'm sorry, no. we're, we're so late, um, but please help us, help us in this case. Paul DeMori at uh, 207 Endicott Street, Mount Seminos, uh, uh, on a building at 79 and 84 North Margin. I am in support of the project. 
It, I would love to see that building become a beautiful new building that uh, uh, we can eliminate the eyesore that's presently there now. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, I'll go next with Lisa. Sorry, right, go ahead, Lisa. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, I'm Lisa Pasadentilli. Um, I grew up in the North End. I'm in support of the building. Um, can you state your address? Been, um, 113 Endicott Street. Um, I've lived here for over eight years. I'm born and raised in the North End, and I believe that it would be a great addition if um, that's renovated, and um, I'm in support of the building. Thank you. Okay, now go to Paul P. Yes, Paul Pascantilli, <clears throat> born and raised in the North End my entire life. I, um, I followed this project right from its genesis and seen the developer make unlimited concessions in regards to the um, some of the initial pushback. Um, four units with four parking spaces, oversized units that would satisfy families who can take advantage of the wonderful school system, as well as just the, you know, just amazing historic neighborhood. I, um, you know, I, I, I you know, again, I can't stress enough, you know, how simple this, 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 this proposal has gotten from, from its original Kind of stats, and so you know. Again, I, I you know, I, I, you know, being on these calls and, and and seeing proposals and seeing some of the things that have been um, kind of up um, for Thank debate, you. I just don't think there's there's a debate here. I think this is Thank something you. that's. Thank you. Can I hear from? Is that two people we've heard from? Three people. Let's hear from the final uh, final person. Hello, Madam Chair. This is Tom. Uh, Attorney Kelly Bray is here representing the abutters for the building, so I'd like her to speak next. Yeah. 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 Hold on. I, I need people in support, whoever, okay? Okay. Oh, you want me to go to the Tizania? Tizano? Okay. Yeah, whomever. Yeah, okay. 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 Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Can you state your name? Hi, my name Yes, Alyssa Tizano, 79 North Margin Street. Born and raised, um, my mother-in-law owns the building. We all live there. We're a block from this development. We are in favor of it. Um, like previously said, it's come a long way from the original plans. Um, and the owner is a, a neighborhood guy just trying to develop and stay in the neighborhood and, and make um, families have an opportunity to stay. And I don't see any issues um, with this development. So I fully support. Um, Tom, did you say Kelly Frey was, who, who is Kelly Frey? Attorney for the abutters at 10th Thatcher Street. At 10th Thatcher? Support case. support or opposition? They're, they're opposed to the project, Madam Chair. She has a okay, so, okay, I just want to make sure I have everybody in support. Okay, now I need to hear from, every, from four people in opposition in addition to uh, the attorney. Or, yeah, mm -hmm. let's go, for, let's take from there. Madam Chair, this is Kelly Frey. Am I um, able to speak in opposition now? Yes, please put your name and address on the record. Um, yes, my name is Kelly Frey. I have a business address of um, at Mintz Levin of One Financial Center in Boston. And I, along with my colleague, Dan Conley, represent Marketplace Limited, Marketplace Loss Limited Partnership, which owns the um, historic residential building at 10 Thatcher Street, um, commonly known as the Vermont building. And as you can see in this um, this photo, it directly abuts the projects and wraps around the project on two sides. Um, Marketplace has submitted a written objection letter that provides a detailed analysis of the reasons why we're opposed to the project. Um, but in addition to those reasons, I also just want to make clear on the record today uh, that um, the proponent's application before the board uh, requires the board to answer two questions in its favor. The first question is purely legal in nature and it relates to whether the proponent must obtain a variance uh, for the project's proposed 65 foot building height. And the second question is factual and relates to whether the project satisfies the requirements for a conditional use permit under Article 6 of the code and additional requirements under, our, under Section 54 18 of the code. 
um, the board should find against the proponent on both questions. With respect to the legal question, the reasons why a variance is necessary are simple and straightforward. Section 54-18 allows the board to approve building heights sub, um, subject to the height limits applicable to the sub-district in which the lot is located. For this project, the lot at 51 North Margin is located in the North End's MFR sub-district, which has a maximum 55-foot building height set forth in Table C of Article 54. But despite that 55-foot building height maximum provided for in Table C, the proponent is seeking to develop a 65-foot building. Thus, the proponent needs a variance because it's asking the board to approve a building height that's higher than the maximum the board can approve under the express provisions of the code. Now, the developer has stated repeatedly that no variance is necessary, and what, he, what the developer okay, is hoping so, to do there. So, it, so can, you, can you move to the other issue, your, your opinion on the other issue? I, I can, Madam Chair. Um, uh, just let me make a few closing comments here. Um, just that for, in addition to the, to, um, the reasons within the text that this, the, the developer's interpretation of the code is untenable and must be rejected, just want to flag for the board and the public that this case presents a very important and critical um, interpretive um, uh, decision for the board to make because if the board finds for this project that uh, this developer can circumvent the maximum building height set forth in the code by seeking this strained interpretation of the code, and that will open the door to other developers to buy up land in the north end, um, similar land in the north end, and seek to develop it to building heights in excess of the code because they know they can do so without obtaining a variance. Okay, now, so let me, let me, so are you, are you almost done, Mr. Frey? Um, well, I'm done with the first point on the legal question. Uh, the second question um, relates to the factual question that uh, I can move to now. With respect to the factual question, um, the board, in addition to the requirements for a conditional use permit, would need to find that pursuant to section 54-18 of the code, um, need, the board needs to make a finding as to whether the project, quote, has the potential for significantly restricting light and or airflow to adjacent structures and or significantly restricting views from roofs, windows, doors, and balconies. Um, so Marketplace Lost has submitted before the board and they're in the record several illustrations showing how the project would locate outdoor decks and mechanicals within feet of the living room and bedroom windows of Vermont Buildings residents. Here's one illustration. And uh, there's also another here, which shows um, where those would be located at eye level relative to the Vermont building. And I won't walk through all those diagrams now, but I just wanted to provide a few of them so, to, so that the public and the board can see for themselves um, how severely this project will intrude on their protective zoning interests. And I don't, you don't just have to take my word for it. In the record uh, before you, there are written objection letters submitted by at least 17 residents of the Vermont buildings, okay. um, uh, each citing their own individual so concerns. Mr. Frey, Mr. Frey, are you almost done? I, I am, Your Honor. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, I am, Madam Chair. Um, <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, so, so I have a couple of questions for um, you. It, if I might conclude, uh, just a yep. couple brief points here. Um, those letters cite a number of issues, one of which um, is that the Vermont Buildings residents are concerned about privacy and safety. There are multiple residents from the Vermont Building that have stated that as single women living alone, they fear they will be less safe and have decreased privacy if the board allows the developer to construct a project that would allow observers from 51 North margin to peer into their bedroom and living room windows. Similarly, the residents are also concerned about light airflow and views that will be blocked if the board allows the proponent to develop a new building at 51 North margin that exceeds the maximum building height expressly allowed in the code. And finally, yeah. another concern that's frequently cited in these letters is noise nuisances. As shown in uh, the first illustration here, the project would place several outdoor decks and mechanicals and an area that's completely enveloped by the exterior walls of the Vermont building and the new structure at 51 North Margin. And as a result, this would create an echo chamber that in, and if the board allows it, it would create extensive noise nuisances that would interfere with the uh, residents of the Vermont building's reasonable enjoyment of their homes. And so for these and all uh, and the other reasons cited in our written objection letter, 
we're asking that the board vote to um, to um, deny the proponent's uh, application in this appeal. Okay, so I have a couple of questions for you. Um, first is, how many units are in the Thatcher building? Uh, I'm not sure about the number. I know the number of residents is a little over 100. So how many units? The precise number of units, I'm, I'm not sure, Madam Chair. How can you not know that? You're representing the owner of that building, right? Uh, it's not material to the issues that are raised in our, the number of units. I, no, no, I, I, I just need to understand it, this proposal in context of your uh, position and, and your statement. So, so, um, so you said there are 100 residents, okay? I'm gonna just take that at face value. Um, when was this building constructed? Uh, all these details are provided in our written um, objection letter, which I will reference here. Uh, were initially constructed in 1904. 1904. That was a good year. Okay. Um, and with, with the expansion or addition, did it require relief from this board or from a predecessor board? Uh, the, well, when a marketplace purchased the Vermont building in the 1980s, it was in significant disrepair. And so what uh, marketplace did was rejuvenated this old, this old um, building that is a historic landmark um, that's on um, registered with the National Registry of Historic Places and, um, and preserved it and turned it into the unique lifestyle building that it sits today. So um, in connection with those, um, those efforts to refurbish and, and obtain landmark designations for the Vermont building, I, I, I'm certain that some form of zoning relief was likely necessary. Um, however, the, the, if we're talking, if Madam Chair is referring to the building height, the building height has not changed um, since that time. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, I was just asking if there was any relief. I didn't, I wasn't specifically asking about height. So zoning relief was likely sought. Okay. Um, okay. And um, so we understood that. Okay, so let's go to the other three hands that are raised um, to see, um, to, to, to get testimony. I think with Chrissy sharing the screen, I don't have access to get to those, to unmute those people. Can we change that on? Okay, you know, no problem, I'll start, hold on, okay. So I'll start with Whitney. I'm sorry, I sent a request to unmute. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? Hi, uh, yes, my name's uh, Whitney Taylor, and um, I live at 10 Thatcher Street, apartment 516. Um, I've been a happy and proud resident, resident in the Vermont building for 17 years. Um, just so folks know, there are 80 units in the building and the U-shape that Mr. Kelly was talking about of the echo chamber that is created impacts 22 units in the building. Um, as I said, uh, I have lived in the Vermont building for 17 years. You will see testimony from some of my neighbors who have lived in the building for up to 30 years. Um, so we are members of this community, even though we happen to be renters. Um, I also just want to point out that I am a direct abutter. Um, I would be able to reach out my window. My is actually one of the ones that you can see. I would be able to touch the building um, as it's being proposed. And, um, and so it greatly impacts not only my privacy and my sense of security, but this proposal significantly restricts light airflow and view um, as per what the requirements we're, we're looking at. Um, you know, I am not, and most people are not against development in the North End. It's a difference between taking a- Can I, can I, can, hold on. Can everybody mute themselves? And um, thank you, Ms. Taylor, because I think you've made your point about 
the proximity and light and air. Um, anybody else? Well, I can I I just hear from, so can you conclude, please? I would like to conclude that the four people who are proponents of this are not abutters. They are, they don't, but three of them don't even live got on it. that. Okay, got it. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, uh, Paolo Tizano, I sent a request on you. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? Paolo Tizano, 79 North Margin Street. I grew up right on that street. And the Vermont building at one time was an eye store. Now they have 80 units. Come there on a Friday or Saturday night. It's like being in Cancun. Hello? We can hear you. Oh, okay. It's like, it's like being in Cancun. Here's a local guy that lived on 47 North Margin Street that just, you know, looking to develop something, you know, bending over backwards for everybody, and they're getting a hard time. That man, when he came here, no one gave him a hard time. Nobody gave him a hard time. Every single unit, 80 units, no one said anything. And those temporary renters, are rent, they're worried about a view. The people, when they build this other thing, they should be worried about the view because they're going to pay, you know, hundreds of thousands for these units. Okay, so and they're not. And they're not. Okay. If they want... Okay. Sorry, sorry. Are you in support or in opposition of this proposal, Mr. Tizana? Okay. I guess there's some confusion there, uh, Ms. Ambassador. Can I move on to the next person? Yes, I... I sent a request to unmute him again, but I don't think it was funny. Um, I'll go on to 617-315-5000. I sent a Hello? request to unmute. Yes. Oh, Paul, were you in support or opposition of that proposal? I'm in, I'm in support. I'm in support of the... Uh... Okay. okay, then we need to hear from a, a, another person uh, in opposition. And, and please give me new information that I have not heard. Caller, 315-5000, you're, you're on, unmuted. Hi, I am in support of, um, this is Nick Verano, 44 Prince Street. Okay, can, can, can I just, uh, is, can everybody, can I have one person put up their hand who's in opposition, okay? I need to hear people in opposition. There's only one hand left. Um, the caller on the line. Are you in support or opposition for this project, sir? In support. Okay. I, um, and I've lost count. Do I need, maybe I need two people in opposition so that the, the deck is balanced. Okay. There are no more raised hands in opposition. We have letters in the record. Um, the one thing, let's see. Oh, yes. So the one thing that I had a question about that has now been clarified is these this um, this mar marketplace is all uh, at 10 Thatcher Street? It's 80 units of rentals that came before this board for relief in the past. Okay, um, um, now I need to. Ma um, Madam Chair, for the record, if to the extent uh, that finding is derived from comments that um, I personally made, uh, I, I will. Tell you, I have not researched the history of what's on the first report. Can right. I can I make sure that everybody is muted, please, so that there's no interruption uh, when when I'm speaking or when the board is speaking. Um, so uh, what I need to find out then is, um, have you had a chance to look at the plans, Mr. Robinson? I have looked at the plans. I've, I've looked at the shadow studies. Um, I've looked at the proposal, yes. Okay. Are there any questions from the board? No. I mean, I, I'd just like to make a, a, a comment, um, you know, pursuant to what the court is asking us to look at. We have the GCOD letter and approval, no harm letters. We have all of that. And the conditional use is very consistent with the uses of buildings in the North End. So, you know, I don't see why so, we would not okay, issue. So, so what I want to make sure is, and I'm going to call back um, Councillor, um, uh, what, what is, uh, Council on behalf of... Um, Attorney uh, Miller. 
Uh, I'm sorry. Yes, I am. I'm, I am getting tired. Yes. Councilor Miller, uh, when this was before this board, was it approved with any provisos? The, the only proviso was BPDA design review, which we've already received. And I'm sure that this did, did it come with any clarification on design review about um, height or anything else? No, no, Madam Chair. Okay. So, uh, okay, so now we need to uh, put on the record that with the height, this is the usual, and, and I'm going to put this on the record that um, <clears throat> we are responding to the um, violations as cited by the um, ISD that we have, we as the Board of Appeal have not varied in any way in the way our procedures, uh, how we proceed on our projects. So in, 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 in uh, to echo Mr. Ruggiero, we have, there is no exception in the way that we are approaching this on the 55 versus 65 issue. The second thing is on restriction of light and air, Mr. Ruggiero um, and, and other members of the board have sat. Um, this is something we all consider in our decision and the fact that this is a six story building with, with enough space between the buildings um, that it is, um, that, that we are in support of it. So um, just if anybody has any other thoughts, please um, pop in. Madam, uh, Madam Chair, uh, this is Eric again. I just wanted to, uh, I did not sit on the first hearing, uh, uh, Hansi was, and you know, I went through and reviewed it and you know, I agree with those um, assessments. I think the building does, it's a, it's a, it's, it is a complicated site, um, but I think the building does a good job of stepping back away from the residents at Thatcher. Um, I look at it from almost a completion of the courtyard. If it was a rectilinear courtyard, um, the way the architecture of the proposed addition is actually um, not a, a straight on view of those. So it's an asymmetrical view. Um, and it steps back away. So I actually think there's been some um, sensitive moves to be respectful. It is a tight urban condition, which we all understand. And, um, you know, I think that uh, I reviewed the notes of the, the, the board before, and I think I, I'm, I'm in sort of support of the original uh, review of this as well. So um, there, were, there were provisos. I just want to clear the record. I'm reading the stamp, um, just so we are all on the same page from Hansi. It was the BPDA design review uh, with the garage door review, um, materials, um, and roof line exterior and top floor setback were the pieces of the proviso, which um, I think are consistent with uh, uh, the BPDA design review and uh, what we typically look. So uh, I agree with the previous review and assessment as it sits today. So. Okay, so in essence, through the design review and our specific comments, on the design review, we did uh, we did respond to the height issue and to the conditional use and 5418 on the conditional use. So, um, if, if if I may if I may summarize, then what is that right? Anybody who doesn't agree, let me know. So, Madam Chair, just I, I totally agree with that summary. And I would make a motion that we affirm the decision of the Zoning Board of Appeals from uh, on the previous date, which I can't, for the July. record, we should probably put the date and I forget what it is. July 27, 2021. Yeah, so, so I would make a motion that we affirm the decision of the Zoning Board of Appeals Board on July 27, 2021. I'll second that, Eric. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. The meeting is now adjourned. Thank you. you. Thank, the recording thank you very stopped. much.